There may well be six world champions on the grid here in China, but they have all been beaten to pole position by a man who has yet to win a race in 110 attempts. The Chinese Grand Prix continues the early season Asian tour of Formula One, and after the changeable conditions of Malaysia, the key factor today is likely to be just how warm or cool the track is going to be. The 3.4 mile Shanghai International Circuit with its long, long straight, 1.1 kilometers long and speeds approaching 200 miles an hour at the end of sector three, towards the end of sector three. But some twiddly sections to deal with as well where downforce is key. The Mercedes working brilliantly in qualifying trim, but there is a question mark as to whether that Mercedes car will be as fast in race conditions. The DRS zone towards the end of that long straight. We will see lots of overtaking today, but we'll also see a great race, I think, because we've talked to lots of the teams and everyone feels the uncertainty of exactly which cars are going to work well in the conditions we've got. A track temperature at the moment of 24 degrees. Now, that's similar to what we saw in qualifying, definitely warmer to what we saw on Friday afternoon in free practice. It seems as though the likes of Sauber and Mercedes, who, as we know, are well up on the grid, suit the cooler conditions, whereas McLaren and Red Bull perhaps want the conditions a little warmer. Well, at the moment, as you can see, it's overcast. There's that slight mist that we tend to have here at Shanghai. There's no sunshine poking through. So if anything, we're on the, the cooler part of the whole scenario. And that's what teams will be looking at now. And remember, they haven't been able to change the cars from qualifying. They're under part Fermi regs coming into uh, the race. The only slight change they can make is to the front wing and, of course, to tyre pressures as well. Sebastian Vettel, then, he starts down in 11th place and uh, he has won this race in the past, but to win it from 11th is going to be tough. There is our championship leader, Fernando Alonso, starting in ninth position. He's won here in the past, but again, to do it in the current Ferrari in dry conditions, it's going to be tough. He's looking for his 75th podium finish of his career. Lewis Hamilton, second fastest in qualifying, but with that five place penalty on the grid as a result of having a gearbox change. He's never won from as low down that on the grid, but he's got to have a chance here today. Kobayashi, third on the grid. Previous best on a grid was seventh place. His best ever finish is a fifth place. So to get on the podium would be a major achievement for this young Japanese driver. Has been done by both Takuma Sato and Aguri Suzuki in the past. Michael Schumacher starts on the front row. His last win then was here back in 2006 when he started from sixth position. He'll be going into his 289th Grand Prix here today but starting on pole position, that first Mercedes pole since 1955, it's going to be Nico Rosberg. Let's take a look at that grid in a little bit more detail then. So, Rosberg starting up front with Michael Schumacher alongside. It's an all-Mercedes front row. Kobayashi in the Sauber and Kimi Raikkonen, let's not forget, in the Lotus. He starts in fourth place. Jensen Button is fifth with Mark Webber alongside in the Red Bull. Lewis Hamilton starts seventh, but he's shown great pace all weekend. And second place finisher last time, Perez starts eighth. Alonso and Grosjean on the row five. Then Vettel and Massa on row number six. Massa still with some work to do, obviously, to re-establish his position there. Maldonado and Senna in the Williams are on row seven. Row eight, Paul de Resta and Nico Hulkenberg in the two Force Indias. Then Daniel Ricciardo with Heike Kovalainen now starting in 18th place. Petrov in 19th, then Timo Glock in the Marussia, followed by Charles Pick, Pedro de la Rosa and Narain Kane in the HRTs. And starting from the pit lane is Jean-Éric Venn. Now, they made a lot of changes to the bodywork of his car. And as I was saying earlier, you're not allowed to change the car between qualifying and race. But if you do, then the rules say you have to start from the pit lane. That's what Jean-Éric Verne will be doing. Really wasn't happy with the handling of his Toro Rosso yesterday. And the young French rookie will therefore start from the pit lane uh, once everybody has gone into that first corner. So now we're building up to the start of this Grand Prix. And for Nico Rosberg, David, this is where the nerves surely begin to tell on pole position in Formula One for the first time. Yeah, well, and apologies if I'm repeating anything you've said, Ben. It took me a long time to get up here to the commentary box. And uh, it's seven years, as you say, since he uh, hit a pole position in GP2. 110 Grand Prix starts. And what he'll need to be watching out for, and I'm sure his engineers have told him, is that when he comes around and sits on that pole position, it can be anything up to a minute before the last car. In this case, it'll be jean Eric. Uh, well, actually, it'll be the HRT. jean Eric Verne will be starting from the pit lane. And uh, you've got to make sure that you don't arrive at the grid with too much temperature in your engine, because that'll affect performance around the first lap. So a few other little procedures he has to work with. 
So the cars move away on the uh, formation lap. Nico Rosberg and Michael Schumacher lead them round. Gary is our man in the pits, of course, and our technical expert. Now, Gary, what are we thinking of in terms of strategy here today? Well, my prediction is a three-stop race is the best, but in reality, you could do a two or a four. It's not that much different, but I think if you did a two, the tyres will be so used by the end of the race that anybody that's done a three could catch you very quickly, really like Hamilton did last year with Vettel. So really is the same, looks the same as last year, but there are some cars having trouble getting the, the softer tyre to work, and there's other cars having trouble getting the harder tyre to work. So it's, it's not just about how many stops, it's about how quickly you can get the tyres up to temperature and working and giving you the grip. So you've got to be alive on the pit wall as normal, but you've really got to read the race quite quickly and make sure you make the decisions as the cars are suffering tyre problems. Great. Well, the teams obviously will be reacting as quickly as possible to whatever's going on. We just saw on that Constructors' Championship order, by the way, that Mercedes, they might have the front row here, but they have scored one solitary point so far this season. They want to uh, improve on that. The tyres we're using this weekend are the soft, the yellow-banded tyre and the medium tyre with the white writing on the sidewall. Of course, the other tyres available as ever at the Grand Prix, the intermediate and the wets, which we saw both in action last time out in Malaysia, but it doesn't look as though we're set for any rain this afternoon and uh, certainly the forecast is for it to remain dry the key thing though as I was mentioning David is that track temperature 24 degrees so that's really about the same as qualifying yesterday but if it drops away much from there then some teams could begin to struggle well as we heard from Jensen on the grid it is so sensitive the Pirelli tires this year to small changes in track temperature you know normally in the past you would start to notice a difference if you had sort of five to ten degree track temperature difference but not one or two degrees like the experienced in qualifying so a number of people have been saying this could be an absolute classic Grand Prix because not only have we got a number of cars showing really great pace we've got this uncertainty who is going to have the tires working who's going to have the right temperature of the track and as we get that wonderful shot there of what the driver's view is like, maybe trying to do some little burnouts as they come out of turn 14 to get those rear tires nice and warm. They've run out of opportunity now to get heat in the brakes, of course. They would have done that on the, the back straight on the run down to 14. And look at Nico's keeping yeah. the grid nice and tight. Yeah, he's certainly keeping them slow onto the uh, start finish straight there. He does a little bit of a burnout. You're on board with Schumacher. And uh, the two of them bringing these two silver arrows up to the front end of the grid. You know, China is a huge market for Mercedes. It's their third largest market in the world after Germany and USA. So it's a crucial front row for them. Cars produced locally in China as well. And now they've got to try and convert these two front row positions into some decent points this afternoon, which has not been the case so far this year. Just remember then, behind the two Mercedes, you've got Kimui Kobayashi here in the Sauber, but also Kimi Raikkonen. Both have made quick starts this year. Jensen Button starts on the right-hand side as you look at it on the third row of the grid, and Lewis Hamilton directly behind him. They've got Mark Webber on the other side to watch out for. Fernando Alonso, remember, starting in ninth place in the Ferrari, the first of the two Ferraris. And the rest of the cars now moving into position, so Narain Kartikeyan brings up the rear. The start procedure is underway. Lights out, away we go, and Rosberg gets off the line beautifully well. Schumacher slower away in second, and watch Kimi Raikkonen. Kimi Raikkonen trying to go up into third, but going right round the outside. Is that Button? I think it is. Trying to go right round the outside. Jensen Button gets past Raikkonen. Button's had a very good start up into third place, so he gets Raikkonen out of the way. Hamilton now trying to follow through. It's Kamui Kobayashi who's had a bit of a poor getaway, and in fact, he's got his teammate Sergio Perez not far behind. And looking further down the grid order, it looks like Sebastian Vettel has dropped grid positions in that scramble through Turn 1. But unlike the previous two years, where we've seen the pole man lose it, his place in the run into the first corner. That was a perfect start from Nico Rosberg. The two Salvas absolutely side by side here. Kamui Kobayashi and Sergio Perez, each of them fighting for position here. And I think Perez has got past Kobayashi. Yes, he has. Meanwhile, Mark Webber also not away. Well, he's got past Alonso, past him, but he's got back past Alonso. Dives down the inside of the Ferrari. Alonso charging. He has to make the most of this first lap. Rosberg leads. Schumacher second. Button third. Reichmann fourth. Hamilton fifth. Perez to sixth place. He has come up really, really well as Perez from eighth place as well. Well, the end of the second sector, we've got Sebastian Vettel has not only had a terrible oh. qualifying, 
He's now had a terrible start. He's down in 15th place. So really struggling. Alonso now trying to get back past Mark Webber as they fight their way down this long, long straight. Rosberg, though, has control of the race initially. Webber and Alonso look at them side by side as they come down towards the hairpin. And Alonso retakes the place from Mark Webber. Felipe Massa's directly behind them as well. And as they head through turn 14, 15, and now up to the last little left-hander, Alonso versus Webber, with Massa not far behind. And a crucial stage of the Grand Prix. Webber needs to be back ahead of that Ferrari as fast as possible. Rosberg leads from Schumacher. They have a gap of just about 1.3 seconds over Button in third, followed by Raikkonen and Hamilton. Further down the order, there's a move from Pastor Maldonado. Doesn't quite come off, though. Maldonado trying to get past Sebastian Vettel. Amazing, but that's what he's trying to do in the Williams. Well, Vettel actually had just passed Maldonado. He's now up into 14th place. Maldonado trying to come back at him. But uh, looking at the front running order, we've got Michael Schumacher just 0.7 of a second behind Rosberg. The reason why that's crucial at this stage, at the end of the second lap, of course, then we'll get DRS activated, and if you're within one second, that'll give you that extra speed on the run down to 14. So Rosberg has got to try and break that one second window to his teammate Michael Schumacher. Senna running in 12th place behind Romain Grosjean. So Grosjean's Grand Prix continues at the moment. He hasn't had any mishaps on the first lap, just saw the Lotus go through. There is Senna then in 12th. De Resta is behind him in 13th. Vettel is 14th. Maldonado 15th. Then Kovalein and Hulkenberg lost out on that initial run. He's down in 17th. Glock is in 18th place. Take a look at the start. Absolutely ace to start, Nico Rosberg. Michael Schumacher made a perfectly reasonable start relative to the other cars. But that Mercedes must have just been absolutely hooked up. Everything, RPM absolutely sorted. Look down the, the middle of the pack there. You can see Sebastian Vettel was getting bunched in. Yeah, and Massa got a bit of contact, I think, from one of the Williams right down into the corner. We'll try and keep an eye on that. I know just down at the back of the grid, you can see Grosjean, I think, was very close to coming into the back of the, the Ferrari of Alonso. Now, as we come to the end of the second lap, he's only actually done four racing laps this year, so give him another couple of laps and he'll be a journey into the unknown in terms of his Grand Prix career with Lotus. And there you've got Bruno Senna, absolutely fantastic start as he runs down at turn one. Oh, yes, absolutely, runs into the back of the Ferrari and he's got front wing damage. But he's still running competitively, he's in 12th place, Senna. This was the start from Lewis Hamilton, how did this go? Well, he hooked up nicely, he'll get use of Kers once he's above 100 kilometers an hour, deployed that and gets a nice run down the inside of the Sauber. But to say that was a little bit tardy of Perez that initially leaving the door open. Kobayashi, that, that was Kobayashi, that Kobayashi one, was indeed. It? Yeah. And that allows uh, Lewis to run the inside line all the way through turn two. Yeah, Kobayashi was definitely a bit slow away. Um, you can see that was a good start from Heike Kovalainen. Kovalainen is currently running his 16th place in the Caterham and he had a, a good run going. Yeah, there was a little bit of bunching up as they went through the first corner. And here we get from Kobayashi's position. Bogged down a little bit too much. Looked like it was a similar start initially to Michael Schumacher, but then he got swamped as he lost that momentum of the others. Yeah. So and that's... then it's so difficult in this situation. Look at how small the mirrors are on the car. You sense that there's other cars around you, but of course there's a massive blind spot in these cars. The sense... McLaren and Hamilton was going around the outside of them. Sensible stuff, though, from Kobayashi. He managed to stay out of trouble, but he did end up losing a place on that first lap to his teammate Perez, who runs in six. So the DRS has been enabled now. We're on lap three out of 56. And Rosberg leads from Michael Schumacher. Jensen Button not far in front of Raikkonen, then Hamilton being chased by Sergio Perez in that Salva. But we saw him star last time out in Malaysia in the damp conditions. But, David, this Salva seems just as effective in the dry, doesn't it? Well, he's shown very good tyre wear on this car in the last two years, and this is going to be absolutely crucial this afternoon. We've talked about track temperature not being particularly high, but I think at this stage we've got the McLarens really nursing the tyres, trying to get and eke a little bit more out of, of these option tyres at this stage. Of course, the cars are heavy with fuel. They would have gone off the grid with about 150 kilos of weight strapped in behind the driver. It's like taking on a couple of passengers over what you actually drove in qualifying. So I think the Sauber drivers have the confidence to be able to push and lean on that tire. And uh, as we get into the end of the, the fourth lap of Grand Prix racing, we can expect the first pit stops to be anything around lap 10 to 15, depending on whether they're doing two or three stops. Well, Rosberg is really getting away. He's 1.6 seconds ahead uh, of Michael Schumacher. Buttons are further 1.6 seconds further back. Front wing looks okay. Keep pushing. We need to get through Massa. 
So that's interesting. The team have had a good look. They've looked at the data as well. And the little bit of damage that we saw from the front wing of Bruno Senna on the back of Felipe Massa's car doesn't seem to be hurting him. He's still in 12th place. And uh, they just saw him go through the shot then. He's being chased by Paul de Resta in the Force India. But Senna only a second behind Romain Grosjean. So still in the hunt here. And that little bit of damage doesn't seem to be affecting him. There are the leaders again. Rosberg with that advantage over Michael Schumacher. Button sitting there in third place. Raikkonen and Lewis Hamilton. A whole bunch of world, world champions all running together. But all being led by Nico Rosberg. This is great stuff. If you remember, Nico Rosberg led here. Okay, Jensen, that was a great start. We're in a really good position now. Let's try and pull away from the DRS of the Lotus behind. Well, I'm sure Jensen could have worked that one out himself, but nonetheless, some comforting words from his engineer. So what I was going to say before that is Nico Rosberg did lead this Grand Prix last year, and Mercedes had underfueled the car, and they had to then run the, the engine more lean towards the end, and that saw him drop down the order. So he's clearly a bit of a Shanghai specialist, and he's opened that gap to Michael Schumacher up to two seconds. Now, there was some talk before this race. Would Mercedes, if they get off in grid order, would they run strategically? Would they have one, whoever the car is that's running in second, in this case, Michael, would he just try and back the pack up a lot, allowing Nico Rosberg to open out a gap and give them a bit of a safety window? Because they are harder on the tires than the cars around them. Yeah, it's a good point. We're going to have to wait and see how it all develops as we go through the course of this race. Massa just coming through there in 10th. Grosjean, there is Bruno Senna. Paul de Resta still in 13th place. Vettel is still in 14th position in the Red Bull. Not really making any kind of progress at the moment. Maldonado is 15th in the Williams. Senna's teammate, of course. Then Kovalainen, 16th. Hulkenberg, 17th. Then Daniel Ricciardo in the Toro Rosso is currently running in 18th place ahead of Petrov. And then Verne, who started from the pit lane, remember, uh, has come up to 20th place, has got past both of the HRTs and the Marussias. We're on board with Sebastian Vettel, finding himself down in 14th position after that miserable first lap and trying to get past Paul de Resta. Let's listen up here as he comes down the straight. Watch the data on his dashboard into top gear, seventh gear, and he'll hold that seventh gear for a long, long way here. Well, you can see the speed of the Force India in front of them. I'm presuming that Paul was able to use his DRS, and uh, Sebastian closes up under braking, of course. So it's going to be a bit of a long afternoon if he's not able to get into that slipstream, use the DRS, and try and pull a pass on the, the Force India. Clearly, the Red Bull is a faster car, but he has the double whammy of running in the dirty air of the car in front. It means that you lose downforce, your car slides more over the track surface, and crucially takes away tire wear. I don't wear the straights. I don't wear the straights. I cannot get past on the straights. Understood. Confirmation that what we just saw there is nowhere on the straights. A little bit of frustration coming through in Sebastian's voice. Um, he wouldn't have expected to be running around the 14th, but he's got to be patient. The, uh, the straight line speed trap figures, certainly from the Red Bulls, it, it, traditionally it's quite low, even when they were at their winning best. They're not usually topping the speed trap figures, but they were only uh, the only cars that were behind them on the speed trap yesterday in qualifying with the two HRTs and the two Marussias. It wasn't you know, a huge margin to the other cars, but even so, that's got to show that when you do go down the field like this, it's very hard to overtake. Well, all of last year, they were regularly in the bottom half of the speed traps and they went to some lengths working with the FIA to try and see if Renault could get an upgrade to uh, their frozen spec of engine because they felt that at the point at which it was frozen it didn't allow that engine to be quite as powerful as the Mercedes for instance which is considered to be one of the best engines in Formula One and as you say when you run in clean air and you're able to use and exploit the downforce and grip of your car it's not a problem but in racing you really have some difficulties we see Grosjean, yeah. a little look at Massa. A little sighter. That would make me nervous, given Grosjean's record so far <laughs> this year. If Ooh. he was weaving around, that would make me nervous. But uh, anyway, he's made it to lap seven, so he's, he's almost doubled his laps this year. Somebody just diving into the pits How in the is background. It, uh, ah, is, it? is it Vettel or...? That's Mark Webber in the pits. Webber. Right. Right. He's got a problem. Nobody's on this gear. I don't know what's wrong. So Hulkenberg struggling himself, but that's a very, very early stop. Now let's get uh, let's get some reaction from Gary in pit lane on this. Uh, what do you reckon, Gary? Well, Weber's come in. Obviously, he's put on the uh, the harder tire, the white wall tire. Early stop. He's obviously just stuck in traffic, and he's making use of that rather than driving around doing somebody else's lap time. He might as well come in, get it, get one of the stops done now, and then hopefully, whenever the rest of these guys have problems with their tires, he's on a fresh set and can uh, can overtake a few of them.
bit of a gamble, but you've got to do something when you're stuck back there. Do you think, do you think we're going to see something similar from Vettel as well? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. He is stuck there. I mean, he's complaining about straight line speed, but they only had a look, as David said, at the speed trap stuff from yesterday. Didn't have to put it over the radio because I'm sure they knew that last night. But, um, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised. He is stuck in traffic, so he might as well do the same strategy. Right, well, up front, no change in terms of the Mercedes still leading in the early stint here. We're on lap seven, and Rosberg and Michael Schumacher, one, two for Mercedes. Button sitting in third, Raikkonen fourth, and then it's Hamilton in fifth place. Nico Rosberg's pit board there, just giving him some uh, information. Of course, they'll be talking to him on the radio as well. He's got a useful margin over his teammate as he comes down to the end of the straight, into turn 14. So a lot of brake blocking in the cooler temperatures on Friday afternoon. Now that the cars are full of fuel, as you said, uh, David, 150 kilos, it's around about 200 litres of fuel, or about three times the size of an average family car in times of fuel tank. I mean, it's a massive amount they carry in the early stages. They have to be very careful not to lock those tyres when carrying such a heavy load. Well, it is indeed. That's a huge amount of mass that you're trying to slow down when you get on the brakes. They're running several seconds a lap slower than they were in qualifying yesterday. And what the drivers are trying to do right now is just be ever so gentle with these Pirelli tyres. They suffer from thermal degradation, and you just don't want to, at any point, take them just beyond their operating window. Otherwise, the, what the drivers refer to as falling off the cliff in terms of performance. So interesting that Mark Webber has chosen to not only go for the harder of the tyres, the which will be slower in absolute peak performance relative to this yellow option tyre that you can see there. And uh, that will give some interesting information for the other teams if they're looking to see what sort of lap time they can get on those harder tyres. They're getting a perfect run now from Mark Webber. We'll just keep an eye on his lap times. He's uh, unsurprisingly gone quickest in the first sector. He's running in clean air now in 20th place. So just riding there for a little while with Kimi Raikkonen, of course, another former world champion who has returned to the sport this year. And in a competitive fourth place currently, set fastest lap at the end of the Malaysia race, did express himself a little disappointed with his qualifying performance yesterday when he put the car uh, up on the second row in fourth place. But basically because I think in uh, Malaysia he felt he had a car that could have challenged for pole. And when he saw Rosberg's time yesterday, he thought, well, there was no way they were going to be able to challenge that. Rosberg's pace, we thought it was a, a real exception in qualifying, but he's doing the laps one after another at the moment, opening up a three and a half second lead over Michael Schumacher. This is the group all fighting over second place. Perez is at the back of that group. So is Kamui Kobayashi, and behind Kobayashi is Alonso in the first of the Ferraris. Then it's Massa under a bit of pressure. I noticed as they came past us from Romain Grosjean again. Senna is in 11th position now. 12th place for Paul de Resta and 13th place and still not coming into the pits unlike his teammate Sebastian Vettel obviously deciding to stay out there now there is the Massa versus Grosjean uh, affair and let's listen okay similar lap time to Fernando there similar lap time to Fernando he's feeling on the shock is that it's going away a little bit weather already pitted fit medium so, just a lot of information going to uh, Felipe Massa. Now, he's on the white wall tyre. He's sort of started this race on the harder of the two compounds. And maybe that explains why, at the moment, he's just sort of holding station, quite happy to just stay in front of Romain Grosjean. By the way, Romain Grosjean has done already in this race double the number of laps that he's done in the first two Grand Prix. He only managed four in the first two Grand Prix. He's done eight, so he's going a lot better. Yeah, indeed. He'll be happy to see that. He'll be hoping to see 56. By the end of this afternoon, we've got the Sauber team out. Yeah, and, so... Uh, which interestingly, Ben, just looking at this, that Michael is running about six tenths of a second slower than his teammate Nico Rosberg, but he's not exactly looking like he's holding up Jensen Button. You know, Jensen's there, but he's not looking like he's, you know, being held up by Michael. So I don't think this is... Um, I don't think this is a strategic play for Mercedes to try and back up the pack and allow Nico Rosberg to get away, but... Uh, Let's just keep an eye on that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we'll also see which of the Salvers will be heading into the pits. Certainly look like uh, they're preparing for one or other. But it was Perez going through, so I guess it's going to be Kobayashi. Yep, Kamui Kobayashi's making his way down in towards the pit lane. And also, we're going to see another change as, uh, presumably, this will be Sebastian Vettel. Yep, there we are, coming into pit lane as we speak. Of course, that uh, tricky pit lane entry, which uh, caught Lewis Hamilton out in horrible conditions when he had no grip left on his tyres back in 2007. But Vettel stops cleanly in his uh, pit box, and they get ready to send him on his way. Yep, away he goes, Force India, also in of Nico Hulkenberg. 
and Kobayashi has already headed off onto the pit exit. So, Vettel hoping that this early pit stop is going to help him. It still brings him out into some traffic. He's gone on to the medium, the harder compound that's being used this weekend, as did his teammate Mark Webber. So perhaps what they've learned from Webber was sufficient. And they've put a new nose on the uh, front of Nico Hülkenberg's car as well. So obviously a little bit of damage, as we knew he had problems on that first lap. That dropped him down, and he's rejoined the fray. No difference, and as you say, Button not really keeping with Michael Schumacher. He's being hounded by Kimi Raikkonen, then Lewis Hamilton, there is Perez, he's still on the yellow side wall tyres, the softer tyre, as are most of the front runners. And as they come out of turn 13 onto the long straight, this is the battle for second place with a number of different drivers, different cars, and that's what's making Formula One this year so exciting. You, know, you can see that DRS zone there was clearly marked. It's not having a great deal of effect in the actual racing, which is surprising. We saw more than 60 passes on track last year and the DRS accounted for about half of those. But so far, there doesn't seem to be quite as much marbling as Raikkonen pits. I think he was followed in there by Perez as well. No, it's actually Hamilton, sorry, who's followed him into the pits. So uh, everyone reacting to Mark Webber having stopped on the, the hard tires. And Mark Webber is the fastest man on the track right now, running down in 17th place. But that's clearly given an indication to all. And uh, we've got Soft the yellow tires. So, Really a lap 11, well that is actually what we expected, anywhere around 10 to 15, and of course it was a battle of the pit crews, and in this case, Lotus not oh, quite as good as McLaren. No, and Hamilton just getting out in front of Kimi Raikkonen, so that's a place gained by McLaren. You know, they, they changed their rear jacks, and look at this, they've come right out with Webber, have they? Uh, yeah, battling away with Mark Webber, so Kimi Raikkonen might have lost that place to Mark Webber as well because Weber's got himself in between those two cars and a fraction of a second lost in the pits and suddenly Kimi has effectively lost two places but he's going to come straight back at Mark Weber. That's a tricky place to try and overtake. They almost touch, they virtually do. He gets squeezed out and Weber gets the place. That was great stuff there. Mark defended nicely on the run down into turn six. Kimi Raikkonen would have used these cars strategically coming out of turn three and in the end, Great wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. Two pros there, very experienced drivers. Mark did exactly what he should do, which is just let his car run out onto the line. Yeah, Lewis, this is the option tyre. The option tyre. So he's just being told he's on the softer compound tyre. They had a problem with the rear jack. Oh, weather blocking up a little bit. With the rear jack last time out in Malaysia, McLaren lost quite a lot of time on pit stops for both Lewis and Jensen. And it's uh, meant a redesign of the jack they used to lift the car for those tyre changes. Well, there was nothing wrong with that pit stop from McLaren, and it benefited them hugely. Got them ahead of Raikkonen, and it got them out ahead of Mark Webber. And so Lewis Hamilton's pit stop going very much according to plan this time. They're closing up on uh, Heike Kovalainen, at the moment, he's running in 13th. It's Kimi Raikkonen just trying to get past the Toro Rosso as well. And uh, these guys going side by side. So Kobayashi getting into the mix as well. Great side by side race, racing in the middle of all that. Uh, Jean Eric Verne uh, is in the Toro Rosso. And we've got quite a few more pit visitors. Button uh, has been into the pits and heads back out. Where does he come out? He's out ahead still of Hamilton. And there is. Uh, Kamui Kobayashi, part of that group in the Sauber. Now, let's see what we've got here. David, Kimi Raikkonen, yeah, this was the battle between Raikkonen and Hamilton. Well, all fair stuff. The pit lane is part of the racetrack, of course, and they both be running in the limiters, which controls the speed of the car. And when they get to that white line, they're able to release. And uh, frankly, that was, it was all over for Kimi when uh, he was dropped from his, his pit box. And great work there from the McLaren crew. Now, what is really interesting, is we've been talking a lot about Mercedes not being able to make the tyres last, and they still haven't stopped. Yeah. So it is so confusing this year to try and make head nor tail of these these tyres. You know, we're on lap 12. They're out there on the option tyres, of course, that they qualified on yesterday, and Rosberg still putting in good lap times. Yeah, that, that is a very good point. The Mercedes are still going round while lots of others have come into the pits. Uh, Gary. Just tell us your thoughts on that. Are you as surprised as we are that Mercedes have been able to go this long? Well, you know, obviously it's a surprise that they ate the tyres up the way they used to do anyway. So they've obviously been working hard on that and uh, it does look good. I mean, if you look at uh, Ros Rosberg's times, he's in the mid-43s the whole time. So he's it's staying stable. Obviously the car should go a little bit faster each lap because of the fuel usage, but it's not. But as Michael Schumacher, and just as we speak now, I think Michael was doing a good job there of uh, making sure that Rosberg got a little bit of a window.
Yeah, no, certainly uh, the gap opened up. He's got the uh, he's gone for the harder of the two compounds of tyre. Also into the pits, Bruno Senna. Alonso was in behind as well. Now, I wonder if Senna, are they going to do anything to that front wing or not? I will see. Now, coming back out, look at that, side-by-side side battling as Schumacher comes out. Button gets round yeah. the outside of him, so Michael running a bit wide there in those new hard tyres, and that's worked fantastically for Jensen Button, yeah. who gets back out in front of Michael Schumacher, so... Yeah. Let's uh, actually just one thing I want to come back on, Ben, is we're going to see a replay here of what happened here for Nico. I suspect probably a lockup as he runs into turn six. Yep, indeed, he runs wide. No real harm done, though. No. And uh, uh, Rosberg pushing on as he approaches his first stop, but uh, as you say, Jensen Button crucial to get him past Michael Schumacher. Oh, and Schumacher has pulled off now what is that is that a it must be a problem for michael schumacher for the second time this year it was a gearbox problem in australia that took him out of the race something has gone wrong once again for michael schumacher it is not going to be his day of days he's not going to take his 90 second victory at the track where he took his last before his semi-retirement and schumacher is out well okay, schumacher's yeah, out. Out, guys. out of the race something with his wheel we saw his pit crews one of the pit crew was slapping the ground as the car pulled away as if there was some issue look at rosberg has now come into pit so let's see if the mercedes crew have a, an issue with a wheel gun or something I, I didn't quite catch what michael said there did he mention a problem with the wheel yeah i didn't quite catch it myself uh now which tire is going on it's the harder compound i think the white wall the white writing on the side wall of the pirellis now rosberg doesn't have anyone backing him up anymore he's got to do this all on his own and away goes nico rosberg now he maintains the lead of this race i believe let's just know he won't perez hasn't been in yet so perez will now be the race leader uh, and again salva uh, as usual going for a slightly different strategy but michael schumacher let's see if we can spot anything here david well that's with michael i think uh, i'm pretty sure he mentioned he had a, an issue with his wheel and i definitely saw one of the pit crews slapping the ground trying to watch out for any wobbly wheels uh, can't spot anything there at the moment but we'll get some more news on that soon i'm sure and that is a real shame for the crew though for michael and for ross brawn they've down to just the one car in this race but it is the lead car right let's keep an eye on the left hand side the pit crew there oh the hand comes up yeah so he I... never got the gun on the, the nut yeah, he, he ne did he never got to do it up at all it was sent on its way and he hadn't even got the air gun on the wheel nut and he knew immediately that that obviously was not going to be good that, disappointment for mercedes that's a real surprise uh, but they've still got their other car leading this race michael schumacher I wonder what, he'll have a few words about that i'm sure when he comes back but he was given the signal to go and that's exactly what he did rosberg then has made his pit stop and uh perez now did he come out in front of perez even though perez hadn't uh, stopped let's just check now i think perez is leading this race isn't he uh, perez leads there we are with sergio perez so uh, after his impressive performance last time out in malaysia where he was going for the victory and in the end had to settle for still uh, a surprising second he now leads the race here in china well he's working the wheel a lot as he went into turn two there suggesting that the rear tires are starting to go off you're certainly getting to the end of the usable life of this particular tire so i think we can expect him to be coming in at the end of this lap felipe massa running in second place is on the harder tire so massa in front of you has not stopped yet button behind is on used option maybe on plan b for him the the great thing for rosberg he's gone on to the harder tire but he does have a new set of the softer tire available to him from qualifying because he only did one run in uh, the final part of qualifying so a lovely position to be in as a driver knowing you've got an, a sort of perfect set of tires waiting for you well he's in a commanding position right now he's running nicely on the uh, on these tires track temperatures playing for him and uh, when we at the, the round of pit stops for Perez and Massa, Massa, sorry, he'll uh, resume his position at the lead of this Grand Prix. Only three and a half seconds separate him from Jensen Button, of course, so he's going to have to keep pushing. And this is where there's still some great racing, and Button doesn't have much of an advantage over Hamilton, so the two McLaren drivers are uh, absolutely on it at the moment behind them. Weber with Raikkonen and Alonso 
Uh, these guys just coming through. There's Weber in the Red Bull. There's Raikkonen in the Lotus. Chased down by the World Championship leader coming into this race, of course. Fernando Alonso, if they can get that Ferrari moving up the top ten a little more, perhaps he can protect that championship lead. Of course, his biggest rivals are the two McLaren drivers. Hamilton currently sits second in the points, Button third. And at the moment, they're the other way around. Button leading Hamilton in their particular battle. Rosberg has just set past his lap. So the Mercedes is working on the soft tyre, it's working on the harder tyre as well. He's just done a 142.5, but the other Mercedes driver is now back at the paddock, and it is race over for Michael Schumacher. Another look at that pit stop. Well, indeed, you see the front wheel, front right. Seemed to be a bit slow coming off, and then when the other wheel was presented, he didn't get a chance to change the direction of the wheel gun. Traffic light had gone to green, you can see the green light on there, so quite why he got that signal. Well, normally the system is that the lights will go green when the wheel nut has been engaged and the, uh, the, the gun has actually taken off the wheel, and that's the sensor that sends that message, and that's why we're seeing sub-three-second pit stops now, because there's, you're taking out the human reaction to actually informing the chief mechanic who controls the the uh, ultimate go and no go for the car and in that case they just didn't get the wheel nut located for some reason the wheel nut is actually housed within the wheel it's a system that's been used in dtm german touring cars for a number of years and uh, a number of the teams now have adopted that so every wheel has its own unique nut now salva getting ready for perez um oh what a big lock up from perez down into turn 14 as he gets ready to come into the pit Gary, um, just give me a thought on the sort of pace we've seen from Perez before he comes in. Can, do you think they might go for a two-stop where others might go for the three? Yes, I mean, I would, that's what I would try to do. They're putting on uh, the harder, the two tyres again, so obviously trying to go as far as possible. They've, you know, I think that lock-up probably hurt that left front tyre as well, so we need to change them now and just see what happens to them and see how far they can go. Right, well, he's into the pit box. This is the crucial stop for Sauber, and where he feeds back in will be important yeah it's the harder tire a little slow away there yeah, seemed to be dragging his clutch as he pulled away they launched from the pit box in the same fashion that they would launch from the grid but that will have cost him time in the pit lane normally it's about 21 seconds from leaving the track doing a normal three second pit stop and rejoining but in that case it was probably about 22 seconds total loss of track time he's come out just ahead of sebastian vettel interestingly so behind uh, grosjean but ahead of Sebastian Vettel. Vettel's got Bruno Senna still behind him. Um, so that was an important place. He didn't want to come out behind Vettel, both on the harder tyre. And it just shows how close Formula One is this year. There's no team really seems to be able to, even when they get down the midfield, they can't seem to leap forwards like we've seen in the past. You've got a battle for each position. Now, Rosberg is the second of these two cars, and Massa hasn't stopped yet. So Massa really going deep. Ferrari presumably are going for the two-stop option. Well, the crew are not sitting out in the pit lane as we, we speak, so we can't expect Massa to come in, but what we can expect is Rosberg to get the use of DRS, and uh, we'll see his rear wing open up anytime soon. There's the DRS zone, open his wing does, he'll gain an extra 15 to 20 kilometers an hour, and that is a textbook DRS overtake. Yeah, and for someone like Rosberg in this situation, that's where DRS is so useful, because he doesn't lose time behind somebody who hasn't yet come into the pits. A lot of uh, marbles, little bits of rubber down the straight. You saw a few of them getting kicked up there. Is that, is that going to cause any problems as we go through the Grand Prix? Well, certainly later in the race, it makes it more difficult for the drivers, because the actual racing line starts to narrow in some of the higher speed corners, where you see these marbles being thrown off. But of course, they get thrown up into the air and they drop down, and it just becomes the driver sends those less grip out there and start taking a slightly tighter line. Kimi Raikkonen uh, with Fernando Alonso behind. Of course, Kimi, former Ferrari driver himself, world champion with Ferrari indeed, but Alonso very much the current star at Ferrari. It's, it's great to see the two of them uh, running so close together. There's Perez after that pit stop. He's still in front of Vettel, but can't find a way past Romain Grosjean as yet. And Grosjean sitting there in ninth place, doing exactly what he needs to do in this Grand Prix, finish it in the points. That's, that's what he's got to do he's, after those two non-finishes in the early two races. The Frenchman just needs to deliver some points here today, and so far he's driving sensibly, not putting a wheel wrong. Kobayashi running just uh, up ahead of them. Uh, let's just take a look back at Perez. The, now, this was the battle trying to get past Kimi Raikkonen. Went down the outside, but, yeah, Kimi still had it. 
Well, indeed, the rules are this year the drivers can make one change of direction to defend their position, and they've got to do it clearly and maintain that line as they go into the braking zone. And then we've got the pass being played out there yes. and then retaken it's again. That's the, yeah. the replay of that particular it, event. But it's yeah. Grosjean, sorry, Grosjean rather than Kimi as well that he's racing against there in that little group. But uh, having a, a good little dice at Kobayashi, as I say, just ahead of them. Button and Hamilton, no real change between those two. And uh, the rest of them heading down. So behind Alonso, then you've got uh, Kobayashi, then you've got Grosjean. There he is, still with Perez behind. Interestingly, we're just getting a message here on our screens in the com box telling us that uh, incident involving car seven, which is Michael Schumacher, of course, will be investigated for an unsafe release. Now, presumably that must be the fact that the wheel nut hasn't been tightened up as opposed to being, you know, normally when you use that terminology, it's because you've been released into another car in the pit lane. Now, Mass has been in for that one stop. Wonder where he will come out with regard to the likes of Perez. I think he's going to come back out behind him, probably. So now that everybody has cycled through at least one pit stop, we've got Rosberg leading the race once again by a margin of 4.4 seconds over the McLaren here of Jensen Button. Then it's Hamilton a further 1.6 seconds behind. So Mercedes power powering the top three cars at the moment. Massa has now dropped down the order. So that brings Weber up into fourth place. So after that early pit stop, it seemed to work quite well for Weber. It's brought him up to fourth. Raikkonen is in fifth and then Alonso. Who's that? That's one of the Sauber's getting very wide as he runs I think through there. That was uh, Perez, Perez indeed. He went really wide out onto those marbles we were talking about in the very high speed turn eight corner. And uh, yeah, that's not good news at all for Perez, who was running so strongly, of course. Yeah, it is Perez. It's the uh, Kobayashi, still the lead Sauber. He's the second place of the Sauber. Senna is now tucked in behind him, so he's lost that place to Vettel. That was uh, quite crucial to him to keep. Right. As we see the, the running order after the round of pit stops, Jensen Button is dropping back from Nico Rosberg. So Mercedes have genuine race winning speed. They're making their tyres last. What could possibly come between Nico Rosberg and his first Grand Prix victory this afternoon? <laughs> well, have they underfueled the car like they did last year? Will they have to turn down the engine later in the race? Um, if they haven't done that and they've done the sums right, he's looking and he's in a commanding position. He is looking very, very good. The track temperature is still at 24 degrees, very consistent. They'll be happy about that. The car's working in these conditions and they uh, won't be too worried. So, uh, Williams, Senna now running in 11th. Maldonado is in 13th place. Massa has come back out after that pit stop. He's now in 14th place ahead of Jean-Eric Verne. Hulkenberg currently in 16th and it's uh, Charles Peak uh, running in 17th place at the moment, currently ahead of his teammate Timo Glock, so he'll be pleased about that. That's Romain Grosjean, another Frenchman in the field, of course, and he's tucked in behind Kamui Kobayashi. Kobayashi knows that points are very important to Salva as well after that remarkable second place for his teammate Perez. They know that podiums are not likely to be regular occurrences, but getting into the top 10 is Certainly possible with this Salva car. Oh, just a little bit of a lock-up. Doesn't want to be damaging these tyres on this uh, middle stint of the race. Still, of course, getting the running of this harder tyre out of the way. They have to run both types of tyre at some point during the race, but it's entirely up to the teams as to when to do that. Gary, um, just a little look at the lap times over the last few laps. Again, Rosberg does seem to have the pace to hold that lead and indeed extend it, as David was saying. Yeah, I mean, he's done a 42.5 there, and that's on the harder tyre. They're, they're a little bit fresher than uh, Button and Hamilton's softer tyre, but in reality, he's pulling three tenths on them. Um, with a tyre that's probably two or three tenths slower in reality. So, you know, the car is working the tyre as well, both in the both the soft tyre and the medium tyre. So, it looks pretty good for them at the moment. 21 laps in, it doesn't really go yet, but it does look pretty good for them. Well, as we say, still a little way to go in this Grand Prix, but Nico Rosberg commanding things currently by 4.4. 4.7 seconds rather now a little bit of a race going on in the background as Paul De Resta is trying to get past Pastor Maldonado De Resta moves to the right as we look at it the Force India trying to go around the outside of the Williams that's not going to be an easy task and sure enough Pastor Maldonado who so close to getting great points in Australia in the first race until he crashed following Alonso in the last lap De Resta now finding a that Williams is using a bit of road that he would like to be in, but no way past it just yet. And behind them, it is Felipe Massa in the Ferrari. Yeah, Massa's having a steady drive there. Lap times 
not looking too far away, I think, from uh, Alonso. He's only a couple of tenths slower on that last lap. So, obviously, running not in the, the position we're used to seeing a Ferrari. And uh, there's no question that Massa hasn't been able to get as much out of this difficult car as his teammate Alonso. But uh, a couple of tenths is respectable, I would say. There's a gap between the two of them at this point. Yeah, that's right. So. The rest are there, not as close to Maldonado this time as they uh, continue away. Senna's just a bit further ahead of them. And uh, lots of looking going on in the mirrors there. That was Noreen carter -Kane, who's about to be lapped by Nico Rosberg. Jensen Button there in second place. You're on board with Fernando Alonso here. Let's just listen. Damn all those gears into the hairpin. Now, let's listen as well as he comes up through this little left-hander will become off the car for the moment. Still chasing after uh, Kimi Raikkonen. They're running fifth and sixth as Weber comes in. Now, he was earliest in on that first stint. Now he's decided to come in after 21 laps have been completed. So now he's going on to another set of harder tyres, I think. There is indeed a set of hards going on there. So the, uh, you're going to be spending a lot of time in the pit lane this afternoon, Mark Weber. As we look where he'll rejoin into some clean air, there'll be absolutely no one on track. The next guy will be Jean-Éric Verne coming through the last corner. So it's sort of 15 laps thin on that last set of tyres. So it's struggling to, to make them last. Of course, as the race goes on, the track rubbers in, it gains grip, you burn off fuel, but just under two and a half kilos a lap, the car gets lighter. So uh, every set of tyres, in theory, should be able to go a bit, a bit longer in the race. On board here with Fernando Alonso as he chases Raikkonen, and then you've got the onboard as well, showing you what's going on in terms of speed, gears, and throttle. And you can see Raikkonen's car moving around quite a lot. What can, let's see what we can learn here, David, from the behaviour of the cars. Well, we can see that Raikkonen desperately trying to make sure that he doesn't have Alonso to get in that one-second activation zone, which enables him to use the DRS. He locked up as he ran the car into turn 11. He looks like he's got a much better drive off of turn 13 and uh, he's opened up that gap slightly but he yeah, was obviously in the zone to get the one second uh, activation so he's got the use of DRS there but not really closing up at all meanwhile McLaren get ready for a pit stop is it going to be Button is it going to be Hamilton they're running second and third at the moment the gap between them a couple of seconds Hamilton is in then Lewis Hamilton from third position brings the McLaren down into pit lane. So they're in a good point scoring position, but he's getting fed up of third places, is Lewis Hamilton. He's had two of them so far this year. I'm sure he isn't really fed up because he is in a strong place in the championship. Good stop by McLaren again, sending him on his way. And with Alonso a couple of places behind him in this race currently, it would be good news for Lewis Hamilton. He could take the championship lead and comes out in front, in behind the other Ferrari of Felipe Massa, coming back out with a 3.9 second pit stop. Well, that will be the second of what we'll expect to be a three-stop race this afternoon for Lewis Hamilton. And, uh, absolutely crucial how they bring the tyres in when they leave the, leave the pits. They can't go out there and hit it too hard, otherwise you'll get this sort of thermal shock into the rubber. So the drivers at this stage of the race, where the cars are still relatively heavy, are having to almost drive with the fingertips. If you imagine in qualifying, they're squeezing the steering wheel and trying to wring every last little bit of speed out of that car. At this stage, you're holding it with a light hand and you're allowing the car to just use all of the road and desperately try not to generate what they call slip angle across the tyre. Well, Rosberg seems to be doing it beautifully because he's got that 4.2 second lead over Jensen Button. He's maintaining it. Last lap, Button was a bit quicker. Um, whether that's telling us anything, we'll have to wait and see. Hamilton has been into the pits. We've got the lapped HRT there. So next up, it is Raikkonen and Alonso. Those two, they've seen Hamilton go into the pits ahead of them. Then behind them, we've got Kobayashi. Uh, there is Kobayashi in the white and black Sauber. He's chased by Grosjean in the Lotus. And then tucked in behind them still is Sebastian Vettel. Mark Webb is beginning to light up the timing screens already on his new set of harder tyres. Gary, uh, the, interesting they went to the harder tyre again there at Red Bull. Do we think that the harder compound tyre is actually working better in the race here today? Oh, we're not hearing from Gary at the moment, <laughs> so not to worry, we'll come back to him in a moment. Let's just take a look here. Uh, Heike Kovalainen, what's he been doing? Uh, Daniel Ricciardo behind him in the Toro Rosso. Kovalainen went in a bit deep there. Oh, and they had a good bit of side by side, and actually, Heike backed out of that. I don't know whether he's got a problem or not. Well, certainly when you find yourself on the wider line going into turn two, you have to 
just try and get off those marbles and uh, if you pick up the rubber that's deposited on the out off the racing line it gets embedded into your tire and it can affect your performance in the next two or three corners so rather wisely Kovalainen in deciding not to try and hang it out around the outside as we get on board here with Lewis Hamilton driving off turn six this is where he pulled the pass on Sebastian Vettel last year you can see he's got more speed in that McLaren as they go through the apex of seven and then again concertina effect as they break and roll through turn eight and then there'll be a lot of patience as they go through this double left-hander gently open the throttle a little bit of oversteer correction there as he opened the the throttle and then hard on the brakes clearly within the DRS activation zone so let's just get a comparison of the relative speeds of these two cars he's got much better drive through the last part of 13 had to hesitate slightly at the latter part and that's allowed the Ferrari to open up the gap slightly so it might be just too too big a gap for him to pull the pass on this lap it's important for Hamilton that he gets clear of that Ferrari as fast as possible, though. He doesn't want to get stuck in this traffic, and he is stuck. He can't get past it just yet. Into the pits comes Jensen Button. He couldn't go any longer on that set of tyres either. Again, he goes for the harder of the two tyre compounds available. So the yellow tyres are being displaced. Uh, Gary, interesting tactics uh, about both Red Bull and McLaren going onto this, onto this harder tyre. Do we see that in these conditions it is the better tyre? Um, yeah, I think that, you know, the both tyres are obviously very, very competitive, but it's just about how your car makes them work. And obviously you have to run both types of tyre. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they'll be doing one more stop. There's, uh, what, 21, 31 laps to go. And so they can make up their mind for the last set as to whether they can uh, use the softer tyre and it comes in quicker, or whether they want to use the harder tyre. You know, they're making their tyre their switch right now to be able to make that decision constructively, because the last 10 laps of this race, it's going to really tell the tale of who did the strategy right. And you can see them up and down at the moment. And whenever you, whenever you pit from the lead, you end up, or from second or third, you end up down in 11th or 12th position because everybody's packed so tightly together with slightly different strategies. Interesting watching Button here at the moment, trying to get past Maldonado, having made his pit stop. He got side by side with him just for a second. Uh, Hamilton is still further behind, uh, still trying to get past Massa. So both McLarens have found themselves sort of into situations where they're in traffic and it's not easy. Now, will he be able to get a pass on DRS? Look at the Williams ahead just sliding around. Button trying to get a really good exit off turn 13. Now the DRS flat on the rear wing doesn't open for a little bit. Watch out for the line where they come up. Now it's open. Now he's got the top speed to go, coming up towards 200 miles an hour, and the braking should be straight forward into the hairpin, and Button has done what Hamilton's failed to do so far, and fails again to get past Massa. This is really costing Hamilton now, especially that Button has got past the car that he came out behind after his stop. Lewis could get frustrated, and remember how many times Massa and Hamilton came together last year. Well, they did spend a lot of time getting up close and personal during last season's racing and uh as, it's, as you see costing and this is where lewis passed jensen last year doesn't manage to do it this time on on the ferrari he's got, and to, watch he's got to watch out for weber leaving yeah. the door wide open there so mark will definitely have a go if he sees an opportunity yeah mark weber has closed up he's been very very fast over the last few laps and mark weber wants a, a piece of that action to try and get past the ferrari himself well he's within the drs zone but hamilton down the inside into turn six Massa doesn't make it easy for him, but nonetheless, he pulls the pass. And no contact made, so Hamilton get past the Ferrari. Mark Webber will try and do the same, uh, but that's cost Hamilton a bit of time there, no doubt about it. And of course, when you first go out from the pits, your tyres are at the best. We saw Mark Webber set fastest lap on his first flying lap after being in the pits, but Hamilton's used the best of his tyre in trying to get past Massa. Yeah, the, as we discussed earlier, he's got to be careful that he doesn't put the tyre into sort of over its peak of operating temperature and uh, maybe that's why he was being a little bit cautious but so in the end he would have used the cars coming out of five gets it in the inside but that is a cautious overtake from from Lewis we've seen a lot you know normally he would have had it down the inside and been right alongside our massa and it, get the appreciation of uh, the McLaren crew there now, uh, cars continuing around, but of course, at a key retirement from this race early on. Just seeing Mark Webber, no, not getting past Massa. A key retirement, the only retirement of this race so far, Michael Schumacher, he's talking to Lee. Michael, so disappointing. The, seemed, the team seemed to know straight away the wheel wasn't on. When did you find out? Yeah, I, I noticed it in turn three once I started to load the, the front right tyre. 
um, that something was wrong. And uh, already by turn uh, six, there was quite a bit of smoke and damage coming up, and I thought it's better to stop it there before I make uh, some serious damage to the car. Should the team have radioed you to tell you the wheel wasn't on? It did look like they knew. Uh, I probably found out uh, before then, maybe. Uh, I don't have any hard feelings. I feel, uh, feel a bit sorry for uh, one of my boys that uh, he, I guess he feels responsible, but uh, you know, it's part of the game. The, t the car seemed to be looking after the tyres better than it has in the past. Could you have been in the podium? Can Nico win this race? Um, I don't know the situation right now, but it looks uh, pretty positive. And I think, uh, I mean, we, we were looking strong, honestly. Uh, we told you guys that uh, we've been having too much wear in Australia. We've been not having enough wear in Malaysia. So there must have been a middle way, and it uh, looks like we found, uh, found a way to operate a car. Bad luck, Michael. Thank you. No worries. Now, Jensen Button, we saw him go past Maldonado, but he's also got past Bruno Senna. We just saw a replay of that, and this was a moment ago as Mark Webber passed Massa. Well, again, copy of what we saw with Lewis Hamilton and the run down into Turn 6. You see the Ferrari not working so well on the brakes. Clear sign that it's lacking overall downforce. Now, Hamilton coming up behind Paul de Resta and just moving to the inside. That looks as though it's going to be a fairly straightforward pass. And <laughs> de Resta just going in deep. He needs to be a little careful there because, of course, he could lose another place to Weber, but it all sorts itself out, and Hamilton is through. Um, but Button going quite quickly over the last couple of laps and uh, into the pits. Meanwhile, Fernando Alonso. Now, he's gone on to the yellow wall tyre. He's gone on to the softer tyre, I think as he heads down pit lane. Uh, Rosberg continues to lead this race. 27 laps have been completed, so we're at the half-distance marker now. Weber also trying to get past Paul de Resta, and it's a straightforward pass for him down through turns one, two, and now as he comes out of three, he should be able to just ease away slightly. Rosberg leads. Raikkonen is currently in second because Raikkonen's not made his second pit stop, as we've just seen Alonso has done so. Grosjean's been running competitively. Vettel also hasn't made his second pit stop yet. It's going to be fascinating to see how it all works out at the end of this race because there are definitely people on slightly different strategies. You're on board with Jensen Button, who's coming up behind Sergio Perez now. Well, I'm just in front of, of him, in front of Perez, who you can see in the distance there, that's Sebastian Vettel. He hasn't, uh, hasn't pitted again. He's only done one stop so far this afternoon. So different strategies being played between Vettel and his teammate Weber. Yeah, that's right. And I wonder how long they can go on those tyres. Grosjean's going pretty well in fourth position currently, too. As uh, there you can see Kimi Raikkonen, who's currently second because the two McLarens have been into the pits, remember, for their second stop. There's Grosjean, his teammate behind. And now here comes Button. He's got the DRS activated. He's side by side with Sergio Perez. Again, another straightforward pass for Jensen Button. Race winner here a couple of years ago in the uh, tricky weather conditions we had that year. Kimi Raikkonen brings the Lotus into the pits. Another former race winner of the Chinese Grand Prix. And looking to try and get a podium for Lotus today. I wonder if he's going to be able to achieve that using the Renault power, of course. Same power as used by Red Bull. He is on the harder, is he? I think the harder compound tyre, the white wall tyre. And he sets off on route again. Now he's going to come out behind both Ferraris, by the look of things, or behind Alonso. And of course, it's been Alonso Raikkonen um, throughout this race. And now Alonso is actually ahead of Raikkonen, whereas he was sitting behind him for a while. So Mark Webber still in the hunt there as well. I don't think we should discount him from this race, but needs to try and uh, close up that gap to Hamilton now. And be Keep an eye on the relative speeds as well there of uh, the McLaren of Hamilton, who's got himself a little held up perhaps behind Maldonado, and that might give Weber the chance to, to close that gap again. So just having an eye on the gap that Rosberg has currently, having done one stop, is uh, if we look at our first of the two stoppers who's running out there, that's Jensen Button, he's currently 20 seconds. Older tyres, they're all there for the taking. Of encouragement. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But what I was saying there is Jensen's running 20 seconds behind Nico Rosberg, so it's going to be extremely close when Rosberg does pit, whether he comes out in front of Button or not, as we expect it to be about 21 seconds for when you leave the circuit, do your stop, and get back out again. So Jensen Button, if uh, we presume that if Rosberg is going to have to 
follow a similar strategy and pit again, it's going to be nip and tuck between those two guys. Yeah, it is. So that's one to watch. But Rosberg is the race leader at the moment and still lapping very competitively. 143-1 was his last lap button. Still uh, trying to find a way through here on Sebastian Vettel. And Vettel's tyres, of course, much older than Jensen Button's. Button did a 1 minute 41, so he was uh, a second and a half faster than Vettel on that last lap. So he's right up behind him. Will he have to wait for the DRS zone, or is he going to be able to overtake before That's they even get there? A very slow lap there for Rosberg out front of 43-1, and we've got Button doing 41-7. So Button has now got that gap down to 18 seconds. Car going very slowly, that's cover lining, I believe, in the caterham. Um, and uh, after a good run in the early stages of this race, great start, I think it's the Finn is in trouble. The two Ferraris there, Massa and Alonso, 10th and 11th, but remember, Alonso has stopped for the second time. Massa hasn't done that yet, and the Ferrari must be sliding around a lot, so I wouldn't think he's going to block Alonso for long. Well, on a different strategy, Fernando on a different strategy, so let the other car pass, different strategy. Of course, team orders are allowed in Formula One now, and uh, famously it was brought to a head because of the information that Massa got in Hockenheim a few years ago, where I think his engineer said... Button on uh, Vettel just... Uh interrupt you there David so he's got that move made and cleanly done maybe that a little bit demonstration there of the uh, straight line speed even with DRS he had that move made quite early and Alonso on Massa here we go no chance for Massa anyway really with the DRS in operation and Alonso goes past his teammate well Rosberg is running about one and a half seconds slower than the uh, the pace of, of Jensen Button Button lost a little bit of time on that lap passing Vettel, so the gap's still at 18 seconds, so Rosberg will be trying to hold on to do a two-stopper this afternoon. That looks like the best opportunity for him to, to win this Grand Prix. Certainly if he was to bail in now, he's going to come out behind the McLaren. So McLaren on a three-stopper, Mercedes on a two-stopper? Perhaps, but if, uh, if they are, then the tyre wear at the end of the race could be very uh, crucial and might be very difficult to to stay up there, but we'll wait and see. As you say, Rosberg still the race leader at the moment. Now Alonso making another move and getting past Paul de Resta. Clean move, no problem at all up at turn six. Massa still not coming into the pit, so it does look as though the two Ferraris are on different strategies here. And interestingly, a new fastest lap has just been set by the Toro Rosso of the man who started from the pit lane earlier, Jean-Eric Verne. Made massive changes to the setup on the car, changed a lot of the bodywork uh, for the race. He was really unhappy after qualifying yesterday. And although he's new to Formula One, he's uh, certainly been very rapid in the ranks of single-seater racing that he's driven before coming to Formula One and uh, he's just got a fastest lap for the moment. Of course, I'm sure we'll see those fastest laps tumble as we go through the race and more fuel is burnt off. Paul, we are definitely still in a race here. We are definitely still in a race. Currently sitting in ninth place. Uh, so, in other words, do not let that Ferrari pass too easily. I know, I can, I can imagine frustrated driver behind the wheel thinking, thanks for that message. <laughs> I think it's very difficult to forget you're in a race when you're sitting in a cockpit of that temperature doing 200 miles an hour approaching the braking zone there in turn 14. Gary, uh, a quick thought looking at what we're the pictures we're seeing so far. We're not seeing the sort of overtaking under DRS that uh, we're just seeing Vettel into the pits, by the way, so we'll keep an eye on that. But we're not seeing the sort of overtaking under DRS that perhaps we saw last year or we expected. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I am surprised as well because obviously, you know, we've seen a, quite a bit of difference in, in car speed down the end of that straight in qualifying. And you'd have thought the uh, 15 to 20 kilometers an hour that you get from the DRS that it would actually have been enough to hold past but it just seems maybe the marbles too many marbles on the side of your track or just uh, you know it's just not enough speed over that distance because obviously the, you don't start the DRS right at the beginning of the straight and start it halfway down so it should be able to be done but difficult is the idea of the thing but I think it's a bit too difficult today <laughs> well we're seeing some passes but certainly not as many as we might have expected uh, that's one to watch for the rest of the race. John eric Verne with that fastest. I think he's just done another one, actually. 141-1 uh, for John eric Verne. Heike Kovalainen, right. You saw him trundling around earlier. He's brought the car back in the pits. Now, then what happened? Or maybe this was what caused him to trundle. Was there a problem trying to get that wheel on? Yes, there was. And whether that then led to, to his problems, I'm not sure. But uh, he is he's out of the Grand Prix. Two retirements, Michael Schumacher and Heike Kovalainen. Well, Grosjean 
finds himself running in second place at this stage of the, the Grand Prix. Only done one stop, like Rosberg. But uh, just see where he did his first stop was on lap 11, so a very early stop. So uh, trying to get good life out of this second set of tyres. And Perez also going well, isn't he? And Perez has only done the one stop and still lapping pretty well, but Button's just set fastest lap now to 140.9. Hamilton here trying to get past Perez. Oof. Oh, that was interesting. He, there was no way there, but he thought that he might have a go up the inside, decided against it. And Perez just fending off Lewis Hamilton, the double winner here in China in the past for the moment. In comes Grosjean. Right, there you are. You're talking about Romain Grosjean, but that was a good stint, I think, by the Frenchman. You know, he's, he will have moved himself up the order hugely as a result of that. And Romain Grosjean showing the sort of pace that we saw in testing from him, which he hasn't really been able to demonstrate in the first two Grand Prix of this year. Yeah, that was an impressive 21 laps on that set of tyres. It may not sound that impressive to the viewers back home, but uh, the Pirelli... OK, Jensen, we are still in this to win. We are winning, going to win this race. Jensen, looking at target plus three. Dave Robson really getting fired up about this, uh, yeah. this one, isn't he? Target plus three that means uh, they'll have a, had a planned strategy going into the Grand Prix. And uh, it's just informing Jensen that they'll be adding three laps to his next stop. Um, Button, of course, has done two stops already this afternoon. We can expect to see him in again around 40, maybe a little bit longer, 43, 44. So uh, got a few more laps to do on this set of tyres. Yeah, but it certainly looks as though Rosberg is going all the way um, on, what he, on one more stop, doesn't it? Uh, with just the two stop, whereas Button going for that three stop. Hamilton still hasn't found a way past Sergio Perez for the moment. Looking at the lap comparisons uh, at the bottom of your screen there between Rosberg and Button, and there you are, the benefit of going on to a fresher set of tyres, but Button will is making more stops. So that's what it's all going to come down to at the end of the Grand Prix. Last year, it made for an exciting finish when Hamilton beat Vettel. Hamilton was on a three-stop, Vettel was on a two-stop, and it looks like we're in for a, a similar kind of grandstand finish perhaps here today. How close can Hamilton get to Perez without actually getting past him? Well, that, that uh, Sauber had a massive top speed in qualifying, six kilometres an hour faster, as we mentioned in the pre-show, than the Mercedes. And, you know, Hamilton's having to get defensive as uh, Weber around the outside of six. That won't work, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you, you hung the Raikkonen out to dry when he tried to pass you there. But nice try anyway. Hamilton's too sharp for that one. Yeah. But that Sauber gives him a little bit of a breathing space from Hamilton. But it's so fast in a straight line that even if you've got the DRS available, you've only got maybe an offset of five or six kilometers an hour in top speed, and that's just not enough for McLaren. Now, just looking at the battle at the front, we've got Button running 12 seconds behind Rosberg. We expect them both to have to do one extra stop this afternoon. Rosberg on a two-stopper, we believe Button will be on a three-stopper. So that crucial 12-second gap is what's going to decide who wins this Grand Prix. If Button can close that up, before Rosberg has to do his second stop, or through the last part of the stint, of course, when he's on that fresher set of tyres, I think we're in for a grandstand finish. Here we are again with Hamilton on DRS, closing on Perez this time. No, he's still a bit of a lock-up, no! Sergio Perez gets it turned in. He might lose the place on the exit, though, because he was deep, deep, deep into the corner, and he just stays in front of Hamilton. That was... And again, he's locked up. Oh. And behind them, uh, Vettel, was that? Uh, no, Weber, Weber, sorry, Weber coming in. Rosberg has been in, right. Rosberg, the race leader, into the pits and back out again. And he's coming out ahead of that fight between Perez and Hamilton. So that's where Rosberg re-emerges. Hamilton still can't get past that Sauber, which has done 325 kilometers an hour down the straight, over 200 miles an hour. Well, that was absolutely crucial for Rosberg, the Mercedes team. Try to get two, three more laps. Try to get two, three more laps in front. Try to stay in front. Yeah, the Mercedes team taking advantage of this battling that's going on all the time when they're having to weave and defend and try and find a way through. You're losing lap time. And uh, that's released Rosberg into some clean air. Yeah, so Rosberg still fighting for the victory, but Button going well. So Hamilton and Perez, these two are fighting for a potential podium finish themselves. 
Perez, uh, well, last weekend he was closing up on one world champion, Fernando Alonso. Now he's being hounded by another, Lewis Hamilton. There is Nico Rosberg up ahead of them and tucked in behind. There is Alonso as well. So we're getting us into a three-way <laughs> tussle. And Perez on those tyres, which are not so strong, but he has great straight-line speed. How confusing is this? We said going into this race, Mercedes can't make the tyres last. We said going into the season, Ferrari have got a dog of a car. Yeah. And yet Alonso right on the back of the McLaren. He's the current world championship leader after yeah. three Grand Prix. That's right, and uh, they're battling at the top of the points as he locks up again. And oh, How he... does he make the corner? <laughs> I don't understand how you can be that locked up and still make the apex. Oh, look at this, look And at is this. he going to pit this lap? Let's no. see if he goes straight on. In fact, he oh. does indeed. You can see the pit lane there. Well, actually, the pit entry is quite tricky for the drivers because if you're, if you're going straight into the pits and you're following another car, you have to slow down first and then accelerate up again. But uh, Perry has got the benefit of a straight run in. Yeah, and uh, Alonso now right with Hamilton. So this is exciting stuff. The two former teammates a few years ago, of course, which uh, didn't always go according to plan. Alonso chasing down Hamilton. Uh, let's take another look at the lockup. Of course, having locked up once, David, on these very worn tyres, I suppose it's always likely to happen again. Yeah, well, no ABS on these cars, of course. You can see the wheel just turning ever so gently as the driver tries to create his own EBS by pumping at the brake pedal but of course you still have to take the speed off the car so you can't release your foot from the brake entirely otherwise you'll just go straight on so button is he still doing enough here the gap between him and Rosberg is 9.5 but it's button leading Rosberg now because button still needs to make another pit stop Button needs to pull out 12 seconds to stand a chance of winning this Grand Prix. He's currently showing us nine and a half seconds in front of Rosberg. If he can pull another 12, 13 seconds before his final stop this afternoon, he can come out in front of Rosberg. Of course, even if he does come out behind him, he can uh, then try and race him on the track. So let's keep an eye on that gap. You can see Rosberg behind him. Rosberg now set for the rest of the Grand Prix without stopping. Hamilton comes through behind with Alonso shadowing his every move. Massa, well, he's on a different strategy to Alonso. He's going for the two-stop race as well. At the moment, he's ahead of a bunch of cars. Kimi Raikkonen, Kamui, uh, sorry, Kamui Kobayashi. Then you've got Sebastian Vettel in there. Romain Grosjean is a little bit further behind in the second Lotus, you can just see. But that stint that Grosjean put in really was very, very effective and has brought him up, up towards this group. Just seen that Maldonado has set fast his lap for the moment at a 140.5 in the Williams. Uh, Maldonado currently running in 13th. So, the top 10 at the moment, but they are, remember, on slightly different strategies. You're riding on board with Vettel. Top 10 is Button, Rosberg, Hamilton, Alonso 4th, Massa 5th, Raikkonen 6th, Kobayashi 7th, then Vettel here 8th, you're riding with him. Ninth place behind him is Grosjean, and in 10th place is Bruno Senna. Now then, let's watch Sebastian Vettel as he tries to measure up the opposition here. It's a slightly different story for Sebastian to what it's been in the last few years. Well, he's been used to a lot of clean air running out front and uh, that led people to question his ability to race wheel to wheel. I think that's been oh, put to bed as Weber gets very wide oh. on the exit of turn 13. And well, that'll be one for the FIA to look at that curb after the race because clearly it's launched the front of the car way up in the air. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that's done some damage to the underside of the chassis. You, the cars run on what is called the plank. It's, uh, it's not quite just a piece of wood but nonetheless it, it looks like it and uh, that plank is bolted directly to the base of the chassis and a driver as tall as Mark is pretty much sitting with his spine right on the base of the chassis so he would have taken a big hit in his lower back another flying lesson from Mark Webber we've seen it from him before I wonder if he's uh, going to be a pilot once he retires from, <laughs> from his Formula 1 career he's certainly taken off a couple of times um, now down into the hairpin and Kamui Kobayashi in the middle of that group but it's Felipe Massa trying to eke it out on these tyres, still having made just that one stop. And this is a, looking like a good performance from Massa. He's got to keep his head and not make any mistakes at this stage. Well, good performance from Massa, but great performance from Rosberg. Six tenths quicker on the last two laps than Jensen Button. So it doesn't look at this stage that Jensen's able to do much with this set of tyres. And uh, Rosberg, who we expect to try and take this set to the end of the Grand Prix, has got some good pace. That's really interesting. So Button is not 
getting the sort of lap time that he needs. And uh, at the moment, Rosberg is very much living with him. This tussle, which is for fifth place at the moment between Massa in the Ferrari, Raikkonen in the black and gold Lotus, chased by uh, Kobayashi in the Sauber, and he's got Vettel right behind him, and then Grosjean's not far back. But, as I say, on slightly different strategies, and Massa doing his utmost to stay in this position for the moment. Long time since uh, Massa last won a race. He's not going to win this one today, but if he could come home with some decent points, that would take the pressure off him a little bit at Ferrari. There is Jensen Button, then, leading the race at the moment. What time is Jensen Rosberg doing? What time is Rosberg doing? OK, Jensen Rosberg, seven tenths slower than us. If we can get a few more laps out of this set, we'll be OK. We'll see him right at the end of the race. Now, well, there's always yeah, there's always, misinformation, Ben. <laughs> that was a slight. De there's always a delay on these, uh, slight delay on these radio communications, because certainly on that last. Let's see what this lap is like. 42-0 from Button. Let's see what uh, Rosberg does. 41-4. Rosberg's quicker again on that last lap, and now suddenly McLaren are responding to that, and they're going to bring Button on oh, no, Hamilton in first. Okay, Hamilton and Alonso in together, battle in the pit lane between McLaren and Ferrari. Ferrari very fast with their pit stops in the first round in Australia. Actually, it was Force India that sort of won the game in uh, last time out. This time, pretty even Stevens, I would say, between McLaren and Ferrari as Hamilton stays in front of Alonso. Yeah, beautiful work from both sets of mechanics there, getting that car service. New set of shiny tyres going on there. That'll give them instant feeling of increased grip. And, of course, as we get into this latter stages of the Grand Prix, they've burned off a lot of fuel, and the car just respond so much better it accelerates more easily it stops so much more easily and uh, Mark Webber having a little sniff there on Bruno Senna in the run down to turn six doesn't do anything with it that lap but Mark Webber is currently the fastest guy in the first sector just gone purple so that means he's uh, fastest of all cars so far this afternoon you will expect to see the lap times continue to drop right until late in the race Meanwhile, Perez has been into the pits for his second stop, so that's dropped him down the order. I think he and uh, Kobayashi on different strategies. Yeah, Kobayashi's been in for a third stop, so the two, the sound was going in different routes with their two cars. Sensible stuff. Grosjean, yeah, on the back of this group, chasing down Sebastian Vettel. You can see the McLaren pit crew coming out into the, the pit lane there, and that'll be for Jensen Button. Where is he running at the moment? Well, there he is running right in the pit lane. Drops the car down to the 80 kilometer speed limit. Well, he's, comes, certainly, he's certainly not going to be leading, is no. he, when he comes back out? It's going to be a chase, and he's on the harder compound tyre. It's a slow stop. Big problem with the left rear. It's a slow stop for Jensen Button. He's still there. Now he gets to move. Hamilton and Alonso are fighting, but Button had a dreadful, dreadful stop. And now, as he finally gets going again, you should see him emerge from the left hand side. And look at all the places he's lost. He's lost a whole bunch of places, and Jensen Button's chances of winning this Grand Prix have gone out of the window, even if Rosberg has a problem now. He's got all these cars just ahead of him. Well, agony for the McLaren pit crew there. It's a problem with the right rear, the left rear, excuse me, right as we look at the screen. They didn't seem to be able to get the wheel nut seated. He goes for a new gun or a new nut, and back on again. Not even a shake of the head from Jensen, just sat there impassively. But there was the problem on that, as you say, on that left rear. Well, they obviously don't want to take any chances. If you remember Silverstone last year, McLaren didn't get a wheel nut on at all, and Jensen, pretty much like Michael Schumacher, went out of the pits and had to pull off. So, uh, obviously, they've had some procedural changes there, and they'd rather have a slow stop than... Button in the pits has a slow stop. This could be close. Yeah, that, uh, well, it, it certainly was close. Uh, Jensen Button coming out behind this group, which has got Vettel and Button getting past Grosjean. Well, that was a very important early move. Button's just got to throw caution to the wind to a certain extent here and try and get past. He's on the fresh tyres, so he's got the advantage in terms of grip amongst the guys he's racing with. Well, Jensen Button was stationary for nine seconds during that stop. They are used to being in and out in three seconds, so... It would have been painful sitting there waiting for the lollipop man to tell you it's safe to go. 
Yeah, Weber's slightly further back, so Button's uh, certainly well ahead of him. And he's still, Button's still ahead of his teammate Hamilton. Uh, Hamilton, you can see in the background. So Button trying to chase down. This is the group battling for second place. Uh, so he has to get to the front of this group as quickly as possible. But he is some 20 seconds behind the race leader. There are 15 laps to go. There's the race leader, Nico Rosberg. He has a 20 second advantage over Jensen Button, who finds himself in fifth after that poor stop. And Rosberg is sitting pretty at the moment. Sitting pretty, he can almost taste the champagne unless anything has you know any issues mechanically or anything like that it seems would be the only way to stop him taking his first victory well that would be an emotional emotional moment for mercedes an emotional moment for him i don't want to tempt fate but uh, he's driving superbly there's something about this shanghai circuit that seems to suit nico rosberg's driving style Massa still hasn't made his second pit stop. How, how long can he go on this set of tyres? I mean, he's, he's, he's still there and he's, st he's not been passed by these guys. Raikkonen, Vettel, you couldn't want uh, uh, the guys with a sort of better CVs trying to get past him. Button there as well. But Massa's staying in front of them for the moment. He's done 22 laps on this set of tyres. Yeah, great drive from Massa. You know, a different strategy to the others around them, but he's making the tyres last. It's not the quickest way to drive the lap, but... Uh, it's allowing him to run currently in, in second place. He will have to stop again, of course, but Weber. look at the bunch of cars there. Yeah, Weber yeah. getting the pass on Senna. Fairly straightforward DRS. Most important thing is you're looking after the tyres, really looking after the tyres. The next car is 19 seconds behind you, OK? So look after those tyres. Massa has finally released his punch, racing for second place. Raikkonen is now in second place. Vettel is in third, and Button is in fourth. So Vettel's tactics in this race have worked pretty well, but now it's going to be Jensen Button on a fresher set of tyres, trying to get past both the Red Bull and the Lotus as quickly as possible, and then go on the chase of Nico Rosberg. But Rosberg being told, all you have to do is look after these tyres, and we should be in good shape. Grosjean getting a bit closer to the back of Button there. Of course, Button will be looking at the DRS zone, coming up a little further around this lap to position himself in the perfect spot. The Red Bull, as we know, is not as fast in a straight line. Vettel will know that he could be a sitting target. And he himself, of course, desperately trying to get past Kimi Raikkonen. So what will happen is Raikkonen won't have any DRS. Vettel will have the DRS thanks to being close to Raikkonen and Button also. This is all right, Mark. A lot of these guys in front of you either will pit or will run into trouble. You can get these guys at the end. And by running into trouble, presumably means they won't have any grip. Yeah, they'll run out of uh, tread depth on the tyres. There's about two and a half millimetres of rubber available when you put these tyres on as new. And all the debris you can see on the edge of the track there, that's discarded rubber that's been drained off the top of the surface. And once you get down to about two millimetres, then you just lose the ability to keep temperature in the tyre. So what uh, Kyron Pilbeam, Mark Webber's engineer, is banking on there is that when they hit that cliff, he'll be able to pick them off. Now, this was Hamilton's move uh, a little bit earlier on uh, Pastor Maldonado. That was for ninth position. Um, and then, I think, uh, is this the same move? Yes, I think it is. Yeah, it's down into turn six. That's been a popular passing place for Lewis this afternoon. Yeah, so good move there. But, you know, this race for second, the race for the podium, although Rosberg might have the edge on, for the win here, well, look at how close these guys all are, <laughs> racing for second place. I mean, it's just incredible. It's like Formula Ford racing, isn't it? They're all backed up there, nose to tail. This is great stuff. World champions, second, third, and fourth. As uh, There's a move from Hamilton getting past Senna. So that brings Hamilton now up into seventh position. So he's flying here at the moment. Meanwhile, Alonso trying to get past Pastor Maldonado, trying to go around the outside of him, and the Ferrari has to oh, back he's off. He's on the marbles, and oh. he runs wide. There's what happens when you get out onto the dusty part of the track. Now, does he lose a place to the Sauber? He does indeed. So Perez has got past Alonso. Just being a little bit greedy there, trying to intimidate Maldonado by holding the car on the outside as he went into turn seven. Maldonado, of course, having none of it, and uh, Alonso pays the price. This queue of cars where DRS really doesn't seem to be making much difference. I thought that Jensen Button was going to be able to make that move a moment ago. Now, we're just looking again. This, uh, this is past Senna now, so Hamilton's got past Maldonado. He's now got past Senna. Um, gained a yet another position here as Lewis Hamilton. Same place as he did uh, the move on Maldonado. 
So, on his way goes Hamilton. Rosberg still leads this race, and this is what happened to Alonso. Well, that's what happens when you get off the racing line. There's just lots of little dust and debris, and uh, it's like getting onto ice. You just can't control the car. He had to open the steering, allow it to run wide. Surprised that Button isn't able to just close this gap a little bit more. Grosjean, then Mark Webber. Webber on slightly fresher tyres than Vettel, but there's only about three laps difference between them. Hamilton now closing up onto the back of this group. Crucially, Rosberg doing a fantastic job out front is now 22.6 seconds in front of Raikkonen. So effectively, if he needed to make another pit stop, he could get in, get a new set of tyres, and back out and still be leading this Grand Prix. Wow. That's a wonderful position for him to be in right now. He's got the choice. Do I want to stay with my two-stop strategy, or can I open out that gap a little bit more just to give the pit crew a bit of breathing space? And it was that, that pit stop that went wrong for Button that has allowed Rosberg really to be in that position. Um, Gary, just as we see Rosberg with this big 22-second uh, uh, lead, your thoughts at the moment, you know, 12... Oh, hang on, bit of radio first. Great job again. Next up, Weber. His tyres, five laps older than us. Yeah, Hamilton still on a charge. Gary, just Gary, your thoughts at the moment with, with this 12 laps to go. Yeah, it's just as David said, Rosberg ends the position. I mean, he can keep it neat and tidy. He's still 41-3 against Kimmy's 41-7, so he's pulling up, that, making that gap a little bit bigger all the time. Just needs to keep in his rhythm and make sure he doesn't abuse the tyres. I don't think there's any problem with him going the next 11 laps. He showed that middle stint that they can really run into the 20s. So, shouldn't be any problem for him as long as he can keep his focus and concentration. But, uh, you know, first, first Grand Prix went after quite a few starts. Those last few laps have been a bit of... Uh, they'd be hearing every rattle and jingle in the car, for sure. That's very true, yes. I wonder how the nerves are for Rosberg at the moment. But I tell you, his uh, lap time again was another 1.41.3, so he's not showing any signs of nervousness. Raikkonen is the one in the second place and controlling things at the moment, but he, to get to the end of this race, will have to get 28 laps. Now, is that possible out of this set of tyres? 28 laps? Well, the track does improve, and tyre wear improves as the race goes on, because, as I mentioned before, the track rubbers in, you get more grip, the car burns off fuel, it becomes lighter. So, yes, he can, as he's uh, seeing that... Weber getting past Grosjean, yeah, Hamilton trying to do likewise, although Grosjean's not giving that place he's up. He's not, but that's the same place Alonso ran wide, but oh. does he... No, he'll go wide. Exactly the same, a carbon copy of what Alonso did. It looked like he'd managed to get the pass initially, but he just drifted out onto the marbles. And that's Maldonado, and those two made contact in Australia, so let's hope that this uh, doesn't end badly for Romain Grosjean. I think he's got just enough over Maldonado, who will no doubt sense an opportunity here. Yeah, look, Maldonado is going to have a little look at the inside of Grosjean. They hit each other in Australia. They touch here again. They touch twice. And Maldonado trying to go all the way around the outside of Romain Grosjean again. This is aggressive stuff. And this time, Grosjean fends him off. Great racing. But, oh. He's damaged his end plate there. He ran wide onto the curb. And you can see there was parts of his front end plate. And Perez now getting in on the axe. Perez in the Sauber. He's going to get one, if not both of them, down into the hairpin. On the inside, no, he can't. Maldonado closes the door, but he's got past Grosjean. But Grosjean will try and get back on the exit. These guys racing in GP2 in recent years. It looks like they're racing in it again. Grosjean has stayed in front of Maldonado after that slide halfway around the lap. And now he's probably taking a quick... Uh, sigh of relief as he tries to pull away again and Perez now is the one trying to get past Maldonado. Well, bravo Roma, that was great driving there, he's, uh, I've got to say I held my breath so as he Alonso's managed to slip up, slip up the inside there of Perez, so Perez losing out he's uh, got that familiar view that he had from the, the Grand Prix in Malaysia of the back of the Ferrari <laughs> but uh, anyway, I was saying I was holding my breath when I saw Roman so take it very easy on the left front. You can afford to lose another half a second a lap. Mm, now that's interesting. And look at Alonso. Yes, Alonso does make the move on Perez. So he gets him back after Alonso's mistake a couple of laps ago. He lost the place to Perez. Now he reclaims it. So important in terms of championship points for Alonso. That's 10th place. You get a point there. 
world championship leader coming into this race, but that championship lead is soon, surely going to disappear because both Button and Hamilton are ahead of him, but they're not going to win this race as it stands at the moment. Jensen Button is still in fourth place. There is Button. He's got Red Bulls either side of him. Vettel is holding on to third. And after the problems they had in qualifying, David, Red Bull, with Vettel only qualifying 11th, they have shown today they've got a car that is fast in race trim. Well, certainly the, the benefit of qualifying 11th is that there is a benefit is uh, you get more fresh tyres, of course, to use during the race. And we saw it last year, Mark Webber qualified 18th and uh, came through and finished on the podium. So Sebastian Vettel kept a cool head yesterday with the disappointment of 11th place. And at the moment, he's going to be rewarded with a podium, presuming he can allow these harder tyres to make it to the end of this Grand Prix. Just explain what they're talking about with the front tyres. It's there, isn't it? One of the key areas where the front tyres under so much load. It's not just the load, it's the amount of uh, energy that's being put into the tyre surface. And then you get the rubber, the little marbles flying off that we've seen on the side of the track. So you end up just losing gauge from the tyre. And that's what they have to try and do. Imagine you're rubbing your eraser on a piece of paper. If you rub it, rub it, rub it really quickly, it'll get hot and it'll start to break and you, you use up your, your rubber on your pencil if anyone still uses rubbers and pencils anymore. <laughs> so they did when I was at school. Yeah, and that's the problem that Rosberg has to manage now. Interestingly, though, as you said, they've got enough in hand that they could bring Rosberg in. So that's a bit of a, a judgment call for the Mercedes team. Do they bring him in or leave him out there? It looks like they've decided to leave him out there for the moment. I guess as soon as the lap time starts to go, then they could bring him in. Yeah, they're in a wonderful position. At the moment, he's running 41.7 in comparison to Raikkonen and the group behind him who are running 42.2. So he's continually opening out that gap. He's got a 25-second lead over Raikkonen, and uh, they have the luxurious position of going to the end of this set of tyres or pitting, getting a fresh set of boots. I think their preferred strategy would be to leave the car out on track, not take any, any risks in the pit stop. There's always a chance, as we saw with Michael, that something can, can go wrong. There's Jim Horner for Red Bull. He's got his two cars in the top five. That's certainly a lot better than it was in qualifying yesterday. But is that going to change? Because uh, Weber and uh, Hamilton and Weber coming through, so Hamilton... Oh, and there's a battle there as Hamilton tries to get past Webber, but not really on just yet. He's not going to find a way there, surely. Yes, indeed. He slipped up the inside. and you'll... Oh, he's done it, but, but now... Webber's holding the inside. Sorry, Ben. It's, it's <laughs> good stuff, though, isn't stuff. it? Absolutely brilliant. And now Webber just fends him off, and Hamilton couldn't quite make the move we'll stick. look out for him into turn six so we know that's been a popular place as we see Vettel going on the outside of Raikkonen and trying to do the cutback he'll use curves as he comes off turn six and will he do what Alonso failed to do which is get round the outside and get back on the racing line he does and Raikkonen goes wide that allows Button through so Vettel is into second Hamilton's getting held up and here. Weber's going to position himself and the run he runs wide that'll allow Hamilton through and Hamilton's trying to go around the outside and Raikkonen can't do that Raikkonen who's held on to second place for so long he's lost two places now he might lose another one to Hamilton as well what a race this is turning into for the podium positions it might not be for victory but boy this is amazing stuff between so many different cars we've got the Lotuses in there we've got the Red Bull we've got McLaren in there as well all fighting all the time Senna's down in seventh place by the way and you can see him at the back of the group there so Bruno Senna also on for another good haul of points for Williams but Vettel's got himself into second, Button is in third place, and as they fight for second, Hamilton down the inside of Raikkonen, and he's going to make the move stick, surely. Yes, Hamilton claims the place, and Raikkonen could drop back very quickly now, because Weber also gets a run on him, goes around the outside, and Raikkonen's tyres have, as they say, fallen off the cliff. He is struggling for grit He's now. in big trouble. We saw two black lines as he was spinning the wheels off the the last uh, second last corner turn 14 and uh, yeah how to lose several places and again another place lost the Senna goes up the inside and what will Grosjean do his teammate he's, he's up the inside he's done it done it as well yep he's got past and past to Maldonado so in one lap look how many places Kimi Raikkonen has lost this is a textbook example of hitting the cliff in terms of tire performance and basically he's just worn away the, the gauge he loses another position to Maldonado and next up is Alonso Actually, yeah. And Alonso well, passes him coming off the turn. That's so right. Raikkonen goes from second to tenth. But Grosjean gained a place there on Senna as well. So Grosjean, who had, has had such a difficult start to the year, 
is flying now for Lotus. They have got a fast car. The tyres haven't lasted for Raikkonen, but for Grosjean, things are working much better. Alonso now is going to try and get past the Williams. Well, so much to look at there. Let's see what's been going on. Hamilton, this was on the move on Mark Webber, got down the inside, and they were side by side, and Webber just did not want to give that place up at that stage, and so managed to fend him off, but then it got even more racy a little further around as they were trying to deal with Raikkonen and that was where Weber went wide. Well Mark trying to pull a sneaky one on Raikkonen as he came through turn eight was trying to position it down the inside oh. and look at the debris between off the uh, the racing line the dust and debris being thrown up as we've got the two Saubers going wheel to wheel that allows Raikkonen to get back up the inside. Kobayashi getting the place from his teammate there so I think that puts Kobayashi up into 11th place and uh, well, your teammate's your biggest rival, and that's Kobayashi getting past Perez, the star of Malaysia. Let's not forget in all this excitement that Nico Rosberg still leads for Mercedes, and he has a 25-second advantage over Sebastian Vettel. The race is on for second, though, between Vettel and Button as we look back at the Sauber battle. Well, that was a late move there from, from Perez to uh, defend his position. Kobayashi caught out by that and puts a wheel on the grass. And then again, we've seen it several times this afternoon, Perez locking up. Here we get a replay of the battle that was going on there, Raikkonen on the outside, watching them. Oh, he'll, be, he'll be thinking, well, it would be quite useful for me if they were to touch right now. <laughs> Alonso trying to get past Maldonado here. Senna's a bit further up the road. I said there's a battle for second between Vettel and Button. It also includes Hamilton, because Hamilton is going very quickly at the moment. Hamilton did a 1 minute 40.6 on that last lap. He's only 2.2 seconds behind Button. So we are going to have the three world champions, Vettel, Button and Hamilton, all fighting for second place, I think, in this Grand Prix. But Nico Rosberg is still marching, marching towards his first ever Grand Prix victory. Now, there we are. This is the battle for second that's developing. It's Vettel versus Button. And his last lap, seven tenths quicker than Jensen ahead of you. And, as that radio message tells us, Hamilton behind them is quicker. Now, Button might be able to go faster if he could get past Vettel, but he hasn't been able to do that for quite a lot of laps. Well, you can see he was getting on the throttle early out the last turn there, then sliding the rear of that car, using up precious rubber. It will not be lost on Jensen at all, of course, that he's being chased down by his teammate. Memories of last year when Hamilton sort of fought his way through, got past Button and then got past Vettel. On that occasion, it was for victory. I don't think it's for victory, but it could be for second. And for Hamilton, it would mean the championship lead, of course, as well. Into the pits is the uh, caterum of Vitaly Petrov. Petrov running in 18th uh, position. Actually, no, it's Kovalainen's car. Yeah, sorry, it's Kovalainen's car. I thought uh, he was out earlier, but obviously still running. So Kovalainen in the pits. On board with race leader. It is Nico Rosberg. Look at that soft grip on the steering wheel we've been talking about, ever so gentle on the acceleration, as he then gets out onto this wonderful 1.1 kilometer straight. And I say wonderful because he's leading this race and he's got plenty of time to think. Look at all that clear space behind him. Who would have thought we'd have the Mercedes with a 25 second lead over the Red Bull of Vettel? Remarkable. And there in the distance then, we've still got some back markers, and then finally that battle for second. Now, Vettel's tyres, this set of tyres have done eight laps more than Jensen Button's tyres. For the moment, he can fend Jensen Button off, but presumably, as we get to the end of their life, it might become more and more difficult, and, and Jensen's Button's going for it. it! He's down the inside, it's the hairpin! Jensen Button takes second place, but can he hold on to it? I think he can, yes! Jensen Button is into second place, ahead of Sebastian Vettel, but Lewis Hamilton still catching. Sorry, Ben, I, we, I was tripping over you there with the excitement of that very late pass that Jensen went for, but absolutely assured on the brakes, put his car down the inside, committed to the pass, and uh, Sebastian Vettel tried to come back at him, and here we'll get the replay. Look how far back he was coming into the DRS zone. He starts to sort of faint as if to say, right, I'm thinking about it. Vettel holds the racing line. He maybe should have been a little bit more defensive as he ran into that braking zone, but... Uh, you know, subtle approach to overtaking for Jensen, what beautifully today. So Hamilton now is the next one to try and close up to Sebastian Vettel. Button just trying to eke out his advantage over the Red Bull, but that gap to the race leader, 25 seconds, that's the margin. Remember the 
slow pit stop that Jensen Button suffered was definitely a part of that without that slow pit stop and then getting mired in the group that were all jousting for second and Button might have had more of a chance but looking at the performance that Rosberg has been putting in you know, Ros Rosberg is still in the 1 minute 41s and that on tyres that have done many many laps now shows that Mercedes they might have had problems looking after their tyres in the first two races they have not had that problem here no. The, the mystery of Formula One's tyre performance continues. Uh, we had the surprise of the Ferrari winning last week, or the week before, to say, out in Malaysia. And uh, only four laps, about 20 kilometres just over, separate Nico Rosberg from his first Grand Prix victory. Rosberg started on pole position, remember, and launched himself into the lead. We looked as though uh, Michael Schumacher might well be able to back him up. But Schumacher was our first and only retirement from this race after a wheel nut didn't go on properly. And then since then we've seen some great battling. Kobayashi was started well, didn't uh, well, didn't start so well, dropped back down the order a little bit. Raikkonen held on to second place for so long. Just a, a quick note that Felipe Massa, who was on that different strategy, and we saw him running in second for a while, but Massa, I'm afraid, is all the way down in 13th position. And Raikkonen, having dropped back, is all the way down in 14th place now. So, Vettel, and uh, looking back at Hamilton, then Webber, so these guys are all still very close, little lock-up. Yeah, Hamilton carried a bit too much speed into the apex of Turn 6, with that concertina effect, of course, as they ran in there, but I wouldn't expect that to have damaged the tyre, but, you know, they're certainly getting to the end of their usable life, and he closes right up in Vettel as they go into Turn 9. Vettel has to pass a lap car there, you can see, I've got that view from our commentary box, so... We've got both bits of action here going on. So, yeah, Hamilton's tyres should be in better shape. There's some seven laps newer than those of Sebastian Vettel, and you could start to see Vettel's car sliding more and more. And then Weber, who's got slightly newer tyres than Vettel, <laughs> come into the factor as well. It is about tyre management, and as a Grand Prix driver, David, it's part of their job to look after those tyres and keep them there for the end of the race. It is indeed, it used to be at the formation of the Formula One World Championship. It was about preserving everything, the gearbox, the engine, the brakes, you know, the cars were so fragile back then. Of course, modern Grand Prix racing reliability is so good that uh, the only thing the drivers really need to worry about in terms of management, as you see, is the tyres. Well, Rosberg's doing that fine up front to the Mercedes. Another lap at 1 minute 41.3. Button does a 1 minute 41.1, so Button only gaining two tenths. Jensen, you will have clear air to the end of the race. Let's pull away now before Lewis gets past Vettel. <laughs> <laughs> what a great, yeah. great message there. Well, it's wonderful. McLaren let their drivers go for it and race, and clearly his engineer there that's not lost on him, trying to get the best he can for his driver. Now we're on board with Alonso. He's behind Maldonado and has been for several laps, actually, behind the Williams and Maldonado. Both Williams are running in the top ten here. Senna's in seventh place. Maldonado in eighth position and uh, Sir Frank Williams would celebrate his 70th birthday tomorrow if both cars remain in the points I'm sure Fernando Alonso now what was this ah right here's where Maldonado got past them yeah well they were <laughs> oh, I hadn't realized they were that close my goodness again they were almost banging wheels there real Formula Ford style stuff and look how sideways he got yeah he's great stuff it was a bit of a slow burn race this coming together and then almost coming coming together with the uh, the over there of Kobayashi. Hamilton uh, right on Vettel's tail now. How are those tyres holding up for Sebastian Vettel? Here's an interesting little match, isn't it, between the two young stars of Formula One, and Hamilton goes to the inside as he tries to take the place, and he's done it. He's into third position. Sebastian Vettel cannot respond to that. Weber trying to get in on it too, or can he? Vettel now trying to come back on the outside, but surely can't do anything into the final left-hander here. And for the second year in succession, Vettel gets passed by Hamilton, but this time it's not wow. for the lead. Hamilton's got to be careful with that weaving. He was pulled up for more than one change of direction in uh, Malaysia a couple of years ago. 
And Weber almost taking advantage of it there too as well. You've got the two Red Bulls fighting. No team orders apply here. We're in the closing stages of the Chinese Grand Prix. Rosberg leads for Mercedes. Button second for McLaren. Hamilton now third for McLaren. Vettel fourth for Red Bull. Weber fifth for Red Bull. And in a great sixth place, Romain Grosjean in the Lotus. He hasn't finished a Grand Prix yet this year, but Grosjean is in sixth. Senna is seventh. Maldonado eighth. Alonso ninth and Kobayashi in tenth. But it's not all over yet because Weber wants to get past his teammate. Slightly newer tyres on Weber's car, remember. Not by very much, though there's not a huge margin. Three laps the difference between them. Now, take another look at this, David. Well, classic DRS pass. Gets in the slipstream, opens up DRS. Oh, and a uh, little bit of defending down into turn 14. And then, of course, what Vettel does is he gets the undercut releases any leftover curves, that gives him that extra acceleration, but he's on the outside as you come into this tight last corner. And then, just to clarify the, the situation of the rules now, you, you're allowed to make one change of direction to defend your position. Oh, look at this, it's from Weber versus Vettel. Weber moves to the outside, the Australian going for it, trying to go down the outside, can he do it? He goes wide into the hairpin, Vettel defends, surely can't do it, but now he's got the inside line, Weber's done it, he's got past his teammate, Weber has got into fourth place, he could be on for a hat-trick of fourth places this year. Fourth in Australia, fourth in Malaysia, and he's just taken fourth from double world champion Sebastian Vettel. Well, I suspect that was a sweet feeling, he, uh, he pretty much got shown how to drive last year but so far you've got to say this season he's looked the stronger of the two red bull drivers and remember they're running cars in slightly different specification as well and that's going to cause a lot of thinking back in milton Keynes. which specification car is best well weber it seems to show that what he's got is working but here is the guy that has just led this race from the beginning apart from the odd change on the pit stops he has dominated this race has nico rosberg and he looks all set now for his first ever Formula One victory. His 100th and 11th Grand Prix. And Nico Rosberg, former teammate in karting to Lewis Hamilton, former GP2 champion in, back in 2005. And now he looks to come into the last few corners. Nico Rosberg, his father, of course, Keke Rosberg, world champion back in 1982. He took his first win at the Swiss Grand Prix at Dijon in 1982. But this time, it's Nico Rosberg who wins the Chinese Grand Prix. His first ever victory, the first win for Mercedes since 1955. He's done it. He's dominated the event here in China. And Nico Rosberg can start to celebrate. Jensen Button is going to bring his McLaren home in second position. And behind him, his teammate Lewis Hamilton will finish in third. Mercedes engines finish one, two, and three. Mark Webber comes home in fourth. Well, he's had a couple already this year. Vettel finishes in fifth. Grosjean, a superb sec uh, sixth place. Senna finishes seventh. Maldonado eighth. Alonso only ninth this time, but still in the points. And Kobayashi grabs the final uh, point in tenth place. De Resta, Massa, Raikkonen about to cross the line. But it's Rosberg who wins. Great effort, Nico. Great effort. Go big five. Pick up rubber and enjoy your hit lap. <laughs> yes! Brilliant job, Nico. Brilliant. Fantastic. Well done. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, everyone. Amazing. You can hear the emotion in Ross Braun's voice. It was a bit wobbly when he said, brilliant job and unsurprising. And that was a fantastic performance from Nico Rosberg. Absolutely stunning in qualifying yesterday, half a second quicker than anybody. And to win this Grand Prix by 20 seconds. Just, just remarkable stuff. You know, that team, it is Mercedes, it is Silver Arrows very much so. Of course, a lot of the, the guys there were with Braun. It was Braun, it was bought by Mercedes. Um, so the last win for the guys who were sort of all working in there was the Italian Grand Prix back in 2009 when Rubens Barrichello won. And so that was their last taste of victory as the mechanics and engineers. Uh, but for Mercedes, it is Mercedes now, it is the Silver Arrows. Yeah, thanks, guys. Not, uh, not obviously the perfect result we were looking for. Um, and I think the, you know, the pit stop made it a lot more difficult. But um, even so, a good result and uh, a fun race, I think. Well, nice.
nice to hear. A fun race. Uh, you don't enjoy driving those Grand Prix cars. It's time to do something else. But uh, I think McLaren will be happy with that. So Rosberg takes victory in China ahead of Button and Hamilton. Mark Webber finishes in fourth ahead of his teammate Sebastian Vettel and takes that place towards the end of the Grand Prix. Grosjean gets points for the first time in his Formula 1 career. Senna again in the top seven. Maldonado in the other Williams. Both cars in the points this time. And that is a good birthday present for Sir Frank Williams on Monday. Fernando Alonso finishing in ninth place, Kobayashi in tenth place with Perez, this time out of luck, out of the points in his Sauber, he had to settle for eleventh place ahead of De Resta. Massa survived to finish in thirteenth, Raikkonen the big loser, he was running second for much of it, but dropped to fourteenth ahead of Hulkenberg, Fern, Ricardo, then Petrov, Glock, Charles Peak, Pedro de la Rosa and Lorraine Kartikeyan. Heike Kovalainen did bring the car to the finish, just the one non-finisher, Michael Schumacher. So the cars now uh, on their slow down lap after this historic victory for Nico Rosberg. And what a feeling that must be for him in the cockpit, David. Well, and there a feeling it is for Norbert Haug, Mercedes Motorsports boss. He is <laughs> delighted. He doesn't want to do. Hugging <laughs> Herbie Blash. But you've got to say that uh, that's a, all credit to Norbert. He's kept Mercedes in Formula One when many other manufacturers have come and gone and they've been rewarded the first Silverado victory yep. in the modern era. First since the Italian Grand Prix in 1955, and that was a pole and win as well. Fangio taking pole position, going on to take the victory in the race. Um, actually, it was a 1-2 on that occasion. They didn't get it this time, but they won't mind too much. It might have been a 1-2 if Schumacher hadn't had the pit stop problem, but they'll settle for the victory, I'm sure. And Rosberg over to see Norbert Howe and celebrate this very, very, very special moment. David, you know Mercedes well, you work with Mercedes all the time. Um, just tell me, what, 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 what must this mean to these guys involved in this program? Well, as I was saying there, Norbert Haug started life as a journalist. He has been the motorsports boss of Mercedes for more than 20 years. And uh, through good and difficult times, he's uh, kept them steady. They've committed to motorsport as a platform to develop the technology to show their winning ways. And as you mentioned at the beginning of the, the broadcast, this is a huge market for them in car sales. And I think, I said yesterday, this was the right man in my mind to take the first pole for the Silver Arrows in the modern era, and it's the right man to take the first victory. Nothing against Michael Schumacher, of course, but he's, he's done a lot of winning. And what about this guy, the architect of victory, the success this man has enjoyed at, at the likes of Benetton, and then, of course, at Ferrari, the Michael Schumacher era at Ferrari, and then at Braun, when he had to take on that team that was Honda, and he had to effectively buy the team up and, you know, make that team survive. Then it was bought by Mercedes, and now he is architect of success again. Well, Ross Braun has uh, had a great deal of success during his racing career. I think uh, very much... Very much, uh, he kind of mirrors exactly the sort of success that Adrian Newey has had. They've been battling it out for many years, but today, Ross Braun and the Mercedes team, they're going to taste the winner's champagne. But McLaren second and third, Jensen Button finishing second, Lewis Hamilton third, and in terms of the points, of course, uh, in terms of this World Championship, they will now move ahead of Alonso. Look at it, Hamilton now two points ahead of Jensen Button, and Alonso gaining a little bit but not very much so you've now got the two McLaren drivers fighting at the top of the table Vettel's moved up a bit Weber still in fourth place there Bruno Senna scoring points again this weekend so that's twice and Romain Grosjean getting points for the first time in his Formula One career um, no luck for the Force India drivers this time neither of them De Resta or uh, Hulkenberg getting into the points uh, Maldonado did score though on this occasion Ma Michael Schumacher still down on one point yeah, not a good season so far for Michael. So no, no thought fault of his own today. Yeah, please. <laughs> 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 
nice to uh, hear a little bit of a chat between the drivers, isn't it? And and fun how how far they were talking about that long queue of cars. And of course, Nico didn't didn't have anything to do with it. He heard about it in his radio, but yeah. he was all on his own. He didn't have any long queue of cars. It's a great moment for him, and uh, nice to see Lewis and, and him up there on the podium together. They were teammates in karting, and uh, they're good friends. So Rosberg, there he is. What a special place it is. Doesn't even seem to have broken sweat. Just uh, soak up the moment. Such a such a special moment for Nico Rosberg. Receives the trophy for victory here. The first winner from Mercedes for Silver Arrow since the Italian Grand Prix of 1955. Nico Rosberg has achieved that. And he is going to make the most of all the celebrations that will come, I'm sure. Second place, also Constructors' Trophy, first of all, to Norbert Haug and Mercedes. And he, he didn't even know where to go just a moment ago. It's been so, it's been so long since he's been up there. Of course, as Mercedes, they've never been up there in the modern era. They have to go all that way back. So uh, a very special moment for him. And there, Jensen Button then to receive the trophy for second place. And these McLaren boys are looking strong. It is surely going to be a massive inter-team rivalry between the two of them, but not just the two of them. The Red Bulls are fast, the Mercedes is fast. They're not going to have it all their own way. Lewis is dad there, just applauding what was a very good and half-fought third place. And now it's time for that champagne shower. Norbert Haug is going to be getting it all as Nico Rosberg, Jetson Button and Lewis Hamilton celebrate. In the Chinese Year of the Dragon, Shanghai has been conquered by Nico Rosberg. <laughs>